Please let's all rise. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Vigils are times when God grants us the opportunity to contend in the spirit. Vigils are not just times of sitting and sleeping. They are times of intense worship and prayer. The kind of prayer that strikes a chord in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. And there are so many people inside and outside, different overflows. It's our intention to make this night a fruitful one. Hallelujah. When the men of God were leading the prayer, they were bringing different aspects of spiritual reality. I'm just going to be exhorting us briefly and then we'll trust God to stand in the place of prayer and stretch our capacity in the spirit until something notable comes upon us this morning. Hallelujah. Listen, I believe that every one of us, especially for those who might be here for the first time, have come with all kinds of challenges and we are trusting God to help us. God is not a man that he should lie. Listen, that is not working for you does not mean it cannot work. Every door can open when you have the key. It will not open when you want it to open. It will open when you possess the key. Desire is not enough to bring results in the spirit. You need the keys. So I want us to pay attention. Don't allow the limitation of the flesh. This is a very prophetic moment we're entering. Can you help me with strength? Don't allow your flesh to limit you from receiving the fullness of that which God has for you. Hallelujah. When the man of God came to lead worship, one of the songs that blessed me so much was the song, Sunan Sa Yesu. For me, it was such a revelation. Such a revelation. For his name is greater mightier. There are age-long captivities that must give up on your destiny this morning. I guarantee you. Yes. I'm aware that there are people who have come here with life and death situations. But there is a name. Hallelujah. There is a name. I'm a believer. I believe in God. I believe he is mighty. I believe he is able. There are no limits to him except the ones we create. And listen please. If you can stretch your spirit tonight, believe me, something will come upon your life that will last you a lifetime. You do not know the amount of prayer and communications with the spirit and the heavens that went in for this meeting. No matter how far you are seated, inside or outside, presence of God is here. So I want you to take it serious. I want you to open up your heart. Hallelujah. Because God is mighty. He said, I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. There is a way you have labored and done all you know to do. That you have done all you know to do does not mean that is all there is to do. Is what you know to do. It says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. When you possess those keys, you will rule even in the midst of your enemies. I want to exhort us very briefly. And then we'll storm the gates of darkness. For everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. 
Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Everything that was lost is being returned unto me. Everything that was stolen. Prophesy one time to yourself that everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen. Speak to the atmosphere. Everything that was lost shall be returned. Is a prophecy, it's not a song. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen. One more time from the depth of your heart. Lift your voice in one minute and say, speak to me, O God. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Are you praying? I tell you the presence of God is mighty in this place. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Hallelujah. 
Can you shout a resounding hallelujah? Let every devil know you are alive and doing well and you insist that that which belongs to you must come to you. Shout one more time hallelujah. I want to share with us a spiritual secret tonight and then we will pray. I want to share with us very briefly the secret of spiritual power. Please, I want you to pay attention. There is no man who wants to make a mark in the sands of time. There is no man living in the 21st century who wants to make any notable mark in the spirit. Who will ignore the place of power. There are so many believers who are zealous. So many believers want to become all that God has destined them to be. They have desire. They are sincere. They may even have faith. But they lack spiritual power. Hallelujah. What you will be learning very briefly and then we'll pray. is supposed to empower you. Listen. A point must come in the life of a man when you will have an encounter with power. This realm that we live in is a realm that is compelled by power. It's not compelled by desire. It's not just compelled by sincerity. It's compelled by power. Psalm 63. The psalmist began to cry and communicate something. Psalm 63. Are we there? O oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee, my soul tasted for you. My flesh longs for you. In a dry and weary land where no water is. And this is why I seek for you. Verse 2. It says to see thy power and thy glory reproduced in my life. The same way I saw it in the sanctuary. It's not enough to see power in the church and on crusade grounds. Lord, I want that spiritual reality to be at work in my life. Years ago, when I sensed the call of God upon my life, please listen. I began to study books and study men and women. I studied large churches and ministries. And I found out as I studied that there were so many people who were powerless and could not do much. And when God began to describe to me the kind of ministry and the dimensions that he would want me to walk in. I knew that I would have to spend time with God until I touched something genuine. Otherwise, I would have to join the band of people, 
misleading and deceiving themselves and other people speaking with no results and then I began a journey exploring spiritual power I began to study the lives of men and women who had been used mightily unfortunately I did not find many of them that were models enough I began to study the generals I began to study the apostles Elijah hallelujah and in the course of my journey for me it was a matter of life and death it was not just for my name I knew that I would confront sick people I knew that I would confront oppressed people I knew that it would take power for any kind of increase in ministry spiritually numerically and otherwise I knew posters would only do so much I knew English would only do so much. And I made up my mind that I have no message for God's people until I have the power to prove it. Please pay attention to what I'm sharing. This is an exhortation. I want to stir up your heart. I watch in sincere grief as I see a lot of men of God and people who want to be used by God with so much zeal, so much English, but no power. And then a few who have taught what they believe to be power convince themselves that because they touched someone and he fell down. Power. Why do you need spiritual power? I will tell you. Pastor Alpha and Manasseh shared it very powerfully. There are giants on every mountain. Please pay attention. This city has gates that you are here is a sign of dominion. It's not a sign of the absence of darkness. It's a sign of the prevailing power of God over them. There are many lives here that have been buffeted by darkness. I talk to people all the time and I minister, I minister all the time. And I watch with shock the way Satan prevails cheaply over the lives of people. There are doors that will never open until power opens them. When Moses went to Pharaoh, there was very little conversation. When the conversations were done, it was an encounter of power. Are you getting what I'm sharing tonight? And then I began to pray. I remember when I had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. He never spoke a word to me, but he transferred power. Never spoke one word. But something left him and entered my spirit. He said, the entrance of your word giveth light and understanding unto the simple. I remember when I began to see the miracles and the hand of God. Then I began to see other issues that I could not contend in the lives of people and I knew that I had to go back and that was when I learned that you must consistently contend for spiritual power let me tell you something there is too much noise in the church because there is little power you will always have to explain and explain and explain Paul said when I came to you I did not come with the excellency of speech it says, but I came to you in the demonstration of the spirit power. That your faith will not be upon the wisdom of men, but upon the power of God. Tonight I want to guide us through a few secrets. My personal spiritual journey. I promise you that if you pay attention to this little exhortation, you will encounter power. Jacob was a man who met with the Lord. And he held on to him. He said, I will not let you go. It was an encounter with power. He said, leave me for the day break it. He said, no way. I said, what is your name? He said, my name is Jacob. A cheat and a supplanter. And he says, from now henceforth, your name is changed to Israel. For as a prince, you have fought with God. You have contended with God and prevailed. A time must come in a man's life when you'll be tired of the level you are and cry in desperation 
Lord, I need your power and your glory in my life. There are gates. Many of us come from all kinds of regions. Hear me. Your personal salvation does not deliver your territory. The gates are still there. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are giants on every mountain. The Bible says, how terrible art thou in your works. It says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. Hallelujah. I remember Bishop Oyedeko sharing one time and he said how that the church was not growing. They were fasting. They were praying. And doing all they knew to do. And it was not growing. And then. One time. While they gathered with the brethren. And they were angry at the situation. He said the Lord asked him to come out. And when he stepped out. He saw a dark cloud. And he said this is the cloud. That makes people to misunderstand your ministry. And he commanded the cloud to roll away. And there was an explosion. Let me tell you something. Time does not change anything. It is power that brings change. Time only reveals. It does not change. For 38 years, the man was sitting at Bethesda. But when the power of God came upon his life, it is power that can give you audacity to be able to bring heaven to bear. To be able to bring the realities of the realm of the spirit here and now. It takes power to change an SS genotype to an AA. It takes power to open the door of marriage for a lady that it has been closed. It takes power for a woman without womb to get pregnant. It takes power for someone whose life has been tied forever through the greatness of thy power. I made up my mind that I have no ministry if I cannot demonstrate its validity. Three keys very quickly. And then we are going to pray. The first secret the Lord taught me. Before we talk on the keys, let me just give us a little preamble. First John chapter 5 verse 9. Help us media. First John 5 verse 19. Very simple but interesting revelation that God gives us there. First John 5 verse 19. Can we read it together as projected? One, two, read. Can you read it louder? One, two, read. Although we are of God, I'm giving you an information that the whole cosmos, the social system, lie in wickedness. Please believe this. That the whole world lies in wickedness. You don't need to offend anybody. The condition to be a victim or a potential victim of the curse that comes upon creation is that you are born of a woman. For as long as you arrive here safely, from birth until you transit, there is a potential for disaster. It takes power. It says, rule thou in the midst of your enemies. Rule thou. Pastors, hear me. If your ministry must move from where it is, you can have all the connection in the world. It takes spiritual power. Hallelujah. It takes power for anything to happen in this life. The first key to spiritual power is consecration. Write it down. Don't trivialize what I'm sharing. If you want to see the power and the anointing of the spirit upon your life, the first key is not praying in tongues. The first key is a life of consecration. What does it mean to be consecrated? It means to be yielded. It means to be aligned. It means to be separated unto God. 
Consecration is a reflection of your submission. A dedication that you have given your whole self, spirit, soul and body. You have laid down your will. I see so many people who want power, but they still own their wills. Let me tell you something. If it is true spiritual power you want to see in your life, your will must die. Your personal will, your ambition, you must be willing to lay it aside if you want power with God. You cannot take the power of God and fulfill your own agenda. You must die to your agenda. Are you getting blessed? Spiritual power is not a gift. Make no mistakes about it. Not everything in the kingdom is a gift. There are things that are rewards. Consecration. The price of yieldedness. The centurion, when Jesus came, he made a statement. He said, for I am a man under authority. And on the strength of my submission to an authority, I can tell one go and he will go. I can tell one come and Jesus looked at him. A Roman citizen with such an understanding of the kingdom. Forget about spiritual power when your will is still alive. You want to run your life by your own terms, by your own way. So many pastors are doing their ministry, their church. So many businessmen are doing their business until it becomes God's own. Forget about power. Dedication consecration I'll never forget one time when I was praying it was it, it's not a doctrine it's my personal cause. I had to I was praying and I had to stand before God lay down I stood naked from head to toe and I said Lord I'm dedicated by this prophetic act my spirit my soul and my body let this mortal body become a superconductor of your anointing. I give it to you. I have no ambition of my own. My entire life is around the circumference of his will. You want to see the power of God upon your life. You must come to a point where you die to your will. Do not think God will give you power to do your thing. No. It will have to be at his terms. That's what was happening to Jacob. He touched his tie and made him everly dependent on an authority other than himself. There are so many people who are not consecrated to God. It takes dedication. It takes total surrender. That's the word. Surrender. Surrender. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Use all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Anoint my everything. Use my everything. I release my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. You gave your everything. So I give my everything. You gave your everything. I give my everything. Take all of me. All of me, Lord. This is the key. This is what I did with my life. Lord, take everything. Take my ambition. Take my destiny. Take everything that means life to me. I surrender it to you. And God says, if you can give me everything. He says, for because you did not withhold your son. That was the key. Consecration is not just about religious rituals. It's about a state of surrender. A state where you know that he becomes your life. 
He said, Rem in the spirit called Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. And the life that I live in the body, the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Are you willing to give up everything? The problem is many of us are not willing to give up everything. Because we have been able to educate ourselves falsely that every time you surrender all to God he makes you a failure every time you give up to God he, he, will, he will destroy your life but he says for I know the thoughts that I think towards you say the Lord if it is your business get set to die if it is your marriage get set for the pressure to kill you if they are your children get set to kill yourself raising them but when it becomes his own This song that we sing, they all belong to you. Even the air that we breathe, it all belongs to you. Belongs to you. That's the anthem of my life. There's nothing in my life that belongs to Joshua Selma. It belongs to you. Belongs to you. Listen, I have transferred every responsibility to him. I will play my part, but it belongs to him. My life is not my own. I have no ambition of myself. My breath belongs to him. My strength belongs to him. This is the first secret of spiritual power. Consecration. That life of surrender. Believe me. So many men of God run around with dots of oil. Looking for anybody that is anointed. And they kneel down with their carnality and flesh. You can soak yourself inside one jerry can of anointing oil. You will only get up littered with oil but you will not touch power with God. You want power with God. The first secret is surrender. I'm not talking of born again. I'm talking of him taking everything. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. He was speaking to the church, but he was still crying for intimacy. Number two, the second secret of spiritual power is revelation and insight. Revelation and insight. Ephesians chapter 1, please. Let's look at verse 18. Paul the apostle prayed a prayer to the church in Ephesus. And he made an interesting statement. Help us please. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. He says that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened, flooded with light. Then he says that ye may know. When the eyes of your understanding is flooded with light, you know. You come into oneness with a reality. It doesn't just mean to be aware. It's not talking of awareness. It's talking of a state of oneness where you and that reality have become one. He says... That you may know what is the hope of his calling. And what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe. According to the working of his mighty power. The Bible says, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all that we ask or imagine. But all of that is limited to the power that works within us. Light and illumination. When light breaks open over your spirit, please hear me. When illumination breaks open, authority is given to you in the spirit. One time I was in a vision. I've shared it here a number of times. And while I was in a vision, I saw a big door, giant gate, 
And when I looked closely, it was zoomed to me. And I looked at it closely. And I found out that that big door was made of smaller doors. And on every door, there was a scriptural inscription on it. I saw the doors opening and closing. And every time they opened light, like an arrow would just shoot out of it. And then the Lord began to reveal to me that this is what happens when people catch a revelation of a dimension of truth, the light, the power, the anointing to demonstrate its validity is released upon them. Meaning when you teach a thing you cannot demonstrate, you have not caught the light yet, no matter how you pretend it. Illumination. Illumination. This is part of the benefit of prayer. That when you pray, capacity is given to you in the spirit. It's like a, a, an elevation in the spirit that tilts you in a position where you are able to see clearer. And on the strength of that illumination, you will walk. Hallelujah. There are so many people groping around. Dominion, I've said it again and again. Dominion is not an impartation. You don't receive an impartation called dominion. No. Dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the laws and the mysteries of the kingdom. The scripture Pastor Alpha shared in Job 38, he was trying to quote it. Verse 33, he says, Knowest thou the ordinances of the heavens and canst thou establish their dominion upon the earth? Do you know the laws that govern the realm of the spirit? And can you establish their dominion? There is something that if you know right now, the door that has been closed over you will open. There is an access to light. There is something when a pastor knows, increase becomes unlimited. There is something when a man of God knows, his life becomes a mystery. Every man, functions according to the measure of light that is accessible to him the bible says you will only arise and shine to the degree to which your light has come not when you are tired of sitting arise and shine for thy light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you let me tell you a little secret especially if you are in ministry there is a level of spiritual illumination that begins to rise from your life and your ministry it starts attracting a kind of people. First, it will attract Gentiles. Kings will not come yet. Kings don't come to your life. They come to the brightness. So there is a degree of illumination you have that will begin to bring certain people. But as the light keeps getting brighter, it will begin to compel certain kinds of people. Light. Illumination. I'm not just talking of Bible study. I'm talking about access to the mysteries of the kingdom. He says, call on to me. And that's why we are praying tonight. Because we need access to light. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Call on to me and I will answer. He says, I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. There are things we do not know. The Bible says the secrets of the Lord are with them that fear him and he will show them his covenants. Not everything is accessible to everyone. When Saul and his men watch this. Uh, was it Saul or David? Now I can't get the story quite clearly. But when they were returning back they were tired and hungry. And they went to the priest and asked. They said, we want bread. Here's what the priest said. They said, he said, there is no ordinary bread. The common bread is finished. But there is a hallowed bread. There are deeper things in the spirit. Weightier dimensions of illumination. That can turn a man to become like a spirit. But it happens when you call upon him. He says, call unto me. When the king wanted to destroy Daniel and all his friends, he said, let the king not be hasty in this. I will bring the king a right answer. He went back and called upon him. 
and his eyes were open. He says, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. Brothers and sisters, hear me. The next dimension of our life and destinies are at the mercy of spiritual secrets and mysteries. This ministry, by the grace of God, is revolving around mysteries. Spiritual mysteries. A mystery is a hidden code of operation. It's a spiritual code of operation that only takes the agency of the Holy Ghost for you to understand its operation. And it says it has been given unto you to know. There is a mystery that will command dominion in your family. That all those powers of darkness that attempt to tie people's destinies down. Illumination. Number three. The third key to walking in spiritual power is being and remaining full of the Holy Ghost. Being full of the Holy Ghost. Full of the Holy Ghost. There are different measures and dimensions of the Holy Spirit that can find expression in people. But if you want spiritual power in your life, let me tell you there is no laziness. You must be full of the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, Satan cometh to me and does not find anything of himself. It was, it was Stephen. While he was about to be stoned, the Bible says he was full of the Holy Ghost and power to a point that his face was like that of an angel. In Bible time, the condition to be a worker in the welfare department is that you are full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. That was a requirement. To serve tables, you must be full of the Holy Ghost. There are so many believers who are not full of the Holy Ghost. That's why we carry our emptiness and we keep embarrassing ourselves. And there is one spiritual key to being full of the Holy Ghost. Prayer. Prayer. The ministry of prayer with fasting. It's the key. Spiritual key. That's why we must pray. When you are full of the Holy Ghost. Brothers and sisters, there is an energy that is generated within you. Every yoke, is, the Bible gives us a picture. It's like an expansion that is happening. There is a level that expansion gets. It breaks every chain at once. At once. Full of the Holy Ghost. That's the level that we must contend. In. That you pray to a point where you become full of the Spirit. And certain things will happen to you the moment you are full of the Spirit. The Bible says, do not be drunk with wine wherein in excess it says but be ye filled with the holy ghost if you are truly filled naturally certain things will start you will start speaking not by your mental ascent you are speaking as a response because when when you are full of anything whatever spirit or agency fills you up begins to live out its nature through you manifesting its characteristics through you that's how people become superhuman they are full of the holy ghost to a point that they become puppets their voice is the voice of the spirit their hands have become the hands of the holy ghost so when they tell you god bless you they speak on the strength of the agency the only way to communicate being full of the holy spirit is being drunk when a man drinks to stupor there is a level to which he drinks and that that alcohol influences his mind and his faculty and momentarily he loses consciousness at that point he will say things and do things that are a direct influence of that alcohol when you become full of the holy spirit then the spirit of prophecy will fall on you and you will begin to speak and call things that be not let me tell you something. The correct order of dominion prayers 
is to pray in tongues until you are full before you begin to prophesy. You don't just stand up and start saying, in Jesus' name, gates open. No, there is a dimension you stretch in the spirit. It's like an escape velocity. When you get there, the spirit of prophecy comes upon you. And you begin to make decrees. And I trust God that we'll get to that dimension tonight. That is the level where you can call things that be not as though they were. That is the level where the anointing will shatter every yoke when you are full of the Holy Spirit. But when that power is at work in your life, it begins to activate possibilities. Brothers and sisters, hear me. It takes power for the gate of your destiny to be opened. Every one of us here is on our way to destiny. But it takes power. Otherwise, the gates will not open. Tonight, hear me. You are going to stand and pray until the chains that lock up the gate of your destiny give way. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm preparing our hearts because we are going to pray. The devil must give up on you. You must pray until that spirit of barrenness jumps out of your life. You must pray until the chains that are tying down your life go. You must pray. There is a way you can pray yourself to victory. It's like a flight in the spirit. You keep praying. When the flesh is tired, you say, no way. When you keep ascending, you will get to a point in the spirit where you would have touched reality. Brothers and sisters, you will never come back again. It's an escape velocity in the spirit. And then you wake up and all of a sudden you see doors opening. Don't wait until a word of knowledge is given or a prophecy. Tonight we are praying ourselves to destiny. We are kings and priests. We will take on the priestly role first. We will stretch in the spirit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? James chapter 5 verse 13. Is any man afflicted? Let him pray. Not let him discuss. Not let him complain. Is any man challenged by gates? Are there doors that have refused to open? Let him pray. Is any man jobless? And you've done your applications and doors are not open. Pray your way to victory. Terminal diseases. It's because they have an occasion to lead to your flesh. When you generate power in the spirit, when you generate fire in the spirit, it burns every chaff. Does any man desire to see signs and wonders and miracles in your ministry and in your life? Anything that fights your prayer life has destroyed your access to power. Let me repeat it. Anything that fights your prayer life has destroyed your access to power. You can pray your way to victory in the spirit. You can pray your way to favor and breakthrough. You can pray your way and smash those doors. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. It takes prayer. When the apostles were caught and James was beheaded, it pleased Herod. The people were happy and they bound Peter. They were about to kill Peter and the church said, no way. And they began to pray. Prayer authorizes heaven to step in in your affairs. When you pray, you authorize heaven. When you pray, you activate the ministry of angels. When you pray, you begin the work of creation. Creation did not stop on the seventh day. God only rested. Those who can access the power and the light. Tonight, I want you to be angry with the things that have been happening in your life. Some of us are like a battery. We have gone down spiritually. You must pray yourself to fullness. There are so many men of God who do not pray. 
and they stand and do all kinds of gymnastics. Let me tell you something. Nothing in your life will cover for the absence of prayer. When a man is not a prayer man, it shows there is, there is a touch of eternity upon you when you are a man of prayer. For Elijah was a man of like passion and he used prayer to lock the gates over a city. He did not use a discussion with Ahab. Prayer. He locked the gate and kept the keys in his pocket. He said that gate will not be opened except at my word. Tonight, you can pray yourself to victory. Inside and outside and all around, there are families that have come tonight. People have traveled from far and near. It's time to pray yourself to victory. Pray yourself to victory until you are full of the Holy Ghost. The key of consecration. The key of illumination. The key of prayer. Being full of the Holy Ghost. You become a bank of spiritual power. Hear me. Let me say this especially. This seems to work only for men of God. It may not be applicable for other people. But let me give pastors a secret. The day power comes to your life, poverty has died forever. I guarantee you. I, the day power comes upon your life, genuine spiritual power, not nonsense that people are doing around. The day power comes, you have gotten something that is worth it. I was teaching the school of ministry students and I told them that if not for anything, when you find the anointing, you have found what is more than gold. We trivialize the anointing. Hear me. The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. Oh God, you are my God. Early, like we are doing, will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. I want to see your power and your glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Media, do you have the in the trim audio? They don't have it. There will be different sessions and I'm going to be leading the sessions. Hallelujah. We are going to be praying in tongues for one hour at a stretch non-stop. After that, when the spirit of prophecy is upon you, there is an anointing who anoint us and all of that and then we can minister to people but we need to pray do you have it are you ready with it okay so quickly everyone is going to participate we are going to pray it takes prayer it takes prayer everyone say it takes prayer to command victories say it takes prayer that's what a vigil is. A vigil is not a time to sip tea and take lemon juice and, and banana cake. You are joking. A vigil is a time to tell the devil, Christ has won this. I come to establish my victory. Listen, the breakthroughs that will arise from this prayer session will surprise many of you. You never know how cheap Satan is until you are a man of prayer. You never know how cheap doors can be. How cheap they can open. Pray. Pray. When you pray in the secret, then you make your life easy in the open. But when you do not pray, many of us pray, but we pray amiss. Tonight I want to teach you strategies, deep strategies for spiritual prayer that will produce results that you are talking does not mean you are praying there are many people who are talking for a long time and they leave that place with the same misery and frustration there, is, there are dimensions and laws and there are rules of engagement I don't know about you but part of my request I told God I must step into new levels of grace in this vigil shortly before I came here I lay down flat before the Lord 
and I said Lord my personal desire I know you will use me to touch and bless your people but whilst that is happening I hold on to your garment there is a new level I saw in a vision a curtain open and there was another one and I was pushed forward I said that's it I must pray till what I have seen many of you have seen things in your dream prayer is the weapon that you use to bring it to pass you have seen a great life you have seen a prosperous destiny but there are gates make no mistakes about it your business will not just excel there are gates sister the marriage will not just happen there are gates but tonight ministries and destinies will rise to a new level please i'm saying this so that you will prepare your spirit prepare your spirit rise up everybody inside and outside please rise up the first prayer point is a cry for grace call it the spirit of prayer and supplication lift your voice and pray lord release upon me the spirit of prayer and supplication just pray please everybody rise 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 stand on your feet you came to pray do this for the sake of your destiny will you open up the gate open up the doors will you open up the gate open up the doors Open up the gates Open up the doors Quicken us, oh God, and we will call upon your name Quicken us, oh God, and we will call upon your name Quicken us, oh God, and we will call upon your name Quicken us, oh God, and we will call upon your name Quicken us, oh God, and we will call upon your name Hallelujah. I want you to lift your voice and pray in one minute before we start praying properly. Say, Lord, I surrender everything to you. Lift your voice and pray. Take everything inside and outside, right to the back. Lord, I've tried to live my life my own way. I surrender everything. I surrender my will, my ambition. I surrender everything. It belongs to you. Pray. Total surrender. Lord, it belongs to you. The bread is yours. The gift is yours. The business is yours. The ministry is yours. It belongs to you. Hallelujah. Media, are you ready? Please let me know when you are ready. You are ready? Now, hallelujah. Dr. Cindy Trim is a woman of prayer. Cindy Trim is a woman with a strong prophetic grace for prayer. And we are going to be using her one hour prophetic declaration. She makes prophetic declarations. It's an audio. 
while that is happening until it finishes is a guide the moment it starts we are stretching in the spirit no sleeping anyone who is sleeping hold his hands and walk around with them no sleeping praise the lord because this is about your destiny outside make sure you participate whatever you do be ready to stretch it in the spirit and i want you to imagine yourself ascending a ladder in the spirit where you are tearing down the walls of limitation hallelujah father i stretch my hands over your people and i ask for a supply of grace to pray grace to pray let the spirit of prayer and supplication come upon you let the capacity the capacity to stretch in the spirit it cannot be by your efforts hallelujah are you ready now praise the lord lift your voice everybody begin to pray in the spirit pray like a priest only in the spirit only in the spirit open your mouth and begin to blast in tongues for as a prince as a prince this is not just your normal prayer life i know i know normally you pray you are under a heavy unction there is power in the name of jesus there is power in the name of jesus there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, 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 break every chain. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain. up your Bibles please Psalm 92 Psalm 92 We're entering another phase. Verse 10. Psalm 92 verse 10. I want us to read it together. One to read. One more time. Horn is a symbol of authority. Horn is a symbol of power. The anointing was usually put in a ram's horn. It says, but my horn shall thou exalt. Just like the horn of a unicorn is always above. You will exalt my he says and i shall be anointed with fresh oil listen the lord asked me to do this before we begin to minister to the sick and all of that this is ordinary oil but there is an ability of the spirit that can come upon this and this loses its earthly significance and takes on a heavenly significance this is an anointing that is coming upon you to bring freshness to your life this is an anointing that is coming upon your life to bring remarkable breakthroughs 
I saw this when I was praying in a vision. And that's why I'm just doing this. We're going to be very fast because there are still many other things to do. I'm going to pray on this and we'll put it in this plate. And the ministers will help. We'll just spread it around. When they pass it to you, just dab your hand and put it on your forehead and begin to blast in tongues. When everyone is done, then we we'll begin with the ministrations. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, can you open them for me? This is ordinary oil, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. I declare that beginning from tonight, they carry the anointing of the Spirit. Many of you, as you partake of this, fresh fire comes upon your life. Freshness. Listen. Tonight is a night of encounter with power. Hallelujah. It's a night of encounter with power. Father, I lay my hands upon this. In a name that is above all names, may they become conduits of your power. May they become instruments of power. As this comes upon the heads of many. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That they will bring supernatural breakthroughs. Supernatural freshness. Supernatural grace. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Lift your voice and begin to pray. And say, Lord, as this oil comes upon me, something must break loose in my destiny. Are you praying? As this oil comes upon me, something must break loose in my destiny. Are you still praying? Lord, I'm tired of stagnation. I'm tired of hardship. Keep praying. Lord, my heart is open. New dimension. New dimension of fire new dimension of illumination new dimension of victory new dimension of grace don't don't start applying it yet what tired of the start is called it's gotta be more than gotta be more than gotta be more than Hallelujah. Now listen. I want you to know that this is not an ordinary oil. It has the power of God. What you do is just pass it to the first person. You just touch it and then begin to make declarations and prophecies. We'll do that very quickly so that we'll finish up because there are, there are still some other sessions and our time is already gone. Hallelujah. It's gotta be more, gotta be more. Father, let there be all kinds of miracles and breakthroughs as your people encounter this oil. In the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Just tap it late on your head and begin to blast in tongues. Go ahead, everybody. You can put it on your hands if you want to, but go ahead quickly, quickly. 
Just pass it round, pass it round quickly. Shaparete banana bush. Make sure there's enough outside, please. Let everybody get everybody. Go ahead and pray. Make decrees. Make decrees. Believe what you are doing. Make decrees. Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. Believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Those outside, are they, do they have the oil? Please let's save time very quickly outside. Make sure you're speaking. My life will never be the same. Please rise up everybody. Let's pray for one minute. Ask the Lord to visit you and speak to your situation. Go ahead. Please pray. here kneeling with a child hallelujah the Lord is showing me a family that came here a family that came here I think this this has to do with sickness this is a family is it that you brought somebody or I'm seeing sickness and infirmity Please quickly, let's save time. We have, we still have a lot. Hallelujah. Stand up, sir. Where is your wife? Because I'm seeing a lot of witchcraft and I'm seeing oppression in your life. I don't know you. I don't know if this is your first time coming here. But the Lord wants to bring a visitation to your life. Please believe me. The Lord wants to bring you a visitation. Memuna. I'm hearing the name Memuna. Memuna. I'm hearing a name. I don't know if that's someone's name or that's someone's name. I'm hearing the name Memuna. The Lord is ministering to me. I don't have to call your case. Believe me, the atmosphere that we're in is enough to bring us that breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hearing that name Memuna, I'm going to pray for you. Is your wife sleeping? Please let her come. I just want to minister to both of you. She can return back to the car. Memuna. Mommy, where is the woman with a prayer house? That mommy, please make your way to the front. The Lord is saying I should minister to you fresh grace. Quickly, quickly, please. Where is that person? this young boy 
what is this that I'm seeing? I'm looking at this boy and I'm seeing snakes all over him. This is what I'm seeing. It came from you to him. Please collect this child. Let me minister to this woman. Please don't bring anybody out until I tell you to bring them out. Why are they here? Memuna, is that your name? Help us with a mic, please. Huh? Bring this little girl. How can such a little girl be so oppressed? You're sleeping. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let this oppression leave this lady now. Mommy, I'm going to pray for you. You are stepping into a new level of the prophetic. Your eyes will be opened in a strange way. In a very, very strange way. I'm seeing an angel of the Lord standing close to you and pouring like oil. This is what I see happening to you. Like oil being poured upon you. And the Lord says, I should tell you, you are stepping into another dimension. A strange dimension of grace. Lord, make this happen by your grace. A strange order and a strange dimension of grace. Madam, where are you from? Madam, where are you from? Because I'm seeing, I'm seeing serious oppression and attack. It's not just on your baby. This thing, you are the one who really needs to be free, not even the baby. You get the point. But you have calm down now, madam. Let me talk to you. I'm seeing you in the spirit. There's no mic. Okay, that's all right. I'm looking at this madam in the spirit and I'm seeing you fatter than this. I'm seeing what happened. You were sick. Even now. I don't even know that I'll come out. It's what I'm telling you because I'm looking at you in the spirit and the weight I'm seeing is not the same with what I'm seeing right now. That's why I told you it's not the issue of your child. What is happening is simply translating from you to the child. Come, sir. You and your lovely wife. The Lord is bringing breakthrough. Breakthrough. Tremendous breakthrough. Do you believe, madam? You believe that? Where do you walk? Are you walking? Where? Sterling Bank. It won't be too long. God is going to take you from that place. You know this now. You have been preparing towards. Yes. No, not true. Uh, because I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a referee. Like a, you know when it's almost time in a football match. This is what I'm seeing. Your time there is almost up. And God is going to lift you. I prophesy it in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm declaring that let this happen. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is need to pray for your child. Um, I'm looking at this child and I'm seeing something like symptoms of fever, temperature. We have to pray for him. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, everything that is not of God upon this child, I take authority over it in Jesus' name. Madam, the Lord says I should tell you that he's bringing you into a season of favor. Please, I want you to believe me. I don't just talk if God has not told me anything. Do you believe? Father, bring this family into tremendous realms of favor. In the name of Jesus Christ. Why am I seeing Memuna on your head? Are you Memuna? That's your name. Come. You too, you are Memuna. I'm seeing a name written on her head and I'm seeing Memuna. Is that your name or is the name of someone? And I will restore. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, He can restore the years that the canker worm has eaten. Huh? two things. Number one, your relationship with God. Huh? You can't be one leg in and one leg out. You get what I'm saying, right? Leave all those friends and focus. Use this night. Let this be a night of determination in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, let her be free. Mama, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cause sickness. I cause infirmity. I'm going to pray for the sick. But then I cause sickness from your body in the name of Jesus. And every act of witchcraft, I take authority over it in Jesus' name. I lay my hands upon this baby. What's the name? What's your child's name? Madam, what's your child's name? 
destiny. I lay my hands upon destiny and I speak to you. Be made whole right now from every infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, be prayerful. Eh? Be prayerful. There are some things I cannot show here, but you see, let me speak in parables. You cannot come and collect my thing and pretend not to know me. Are you getting what I'm saying? You cannot come and collect my thing in the secret and stand in the secret pretending not to know me. It's very important. Be prayerful and he's either Lord of all. He cannot share his glory with any other thing. You get what I'm saying, madam? The Lord is going to lift you and take you. Please, I want to pray for your children because the devil wants to oppress them. This is your child. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is spirit. Let her go now. Out! By the power of the Holy Spirit. Madam, I pray for you. I'm seeing three babies. There are some women here. I'm seeing a woman particularly who came here specifically for the issue of fruit of the womb. Please, who is that person? I'm, no, you are not standing for anybody. You came for yourself. Who is that person? Let me just minister to the person very quickly. Please, let's save time. Fruit of the womb. Because the Lord is showing me, I just had the cry, three babies. Congratulations, madam. Where is she? Your name is glorious. We lift you up higher. There's somebody here. You are here with five broad. Right now as I'm talking. Great wisdom for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ha! Ah, I see the healing angels. Stepping into this place. We we'll begin to minister to the sick proper now. I don't know why God does it. But he's going to do it again in a strange way. The anointing of God is going to come upon a lady. And she's going to shout. That loud shout will usher in the coming of the healing anointing. Please don't ask me why this thing happened. Your name is glorious. We lift you up higher, higher. Your name is glorious. We lift you up higher, higher. Your name is glorious. If you're sick in your body, please make your way to the front right now. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Everyone begin to pray, Lord, touch me. Please, if you're sick, just, just give them way. We're going to minister to them very quickly. Everyone will be touched. Everyone will be blessed. that's the end of it my dear that devil leaves you forever never to return never to return listen I want you to know that Jesus heals here we have a track record by the grace and the mercies of God I'm going to minister to you very quickly so that we can speak specifically please make your way to the front just organize yourself and um, bring the lady. Where's the lady under the anointing? Case here. Yeah, I know. Eh? Look at, let me just calm down. I'm seeing something very funny and interesting here. Watch this. This woman, I'm looking at her and I'm seeing a corpse. I'm seeing somebody they have already buried. You see her? This woman is almost quarter to go. I mean, it's not clear there, but there's almost nothing here. Bones. Watch this. Um, the spirit that wants to kill this woman is in her son 
this boy is standing. It's not like it's the boy that wants to kill her. So they went to consult with somebody. Huh? They went to consult with somebody. This person is like a herbalist. And he told them, this is the boy that wants to kill the madam. He got it wrong because his understanding is limited. It's not like the boy wants to kill her. But the spirit at work in him is what is tying her. Both of them. This is the spirit of death. She would have died on the 22nd of this month. 22nd would have buried her. It would have been over. She would have stopped talking from 19th and died on the 22nd. God, you are higher than any other. I can say He's awesome in power. Come on, sing it like victorious people. Oh God. Voice and say, Our God is greater, hey. our God is stronger. Father, in the name of Jesus, I set this boy free from witchcraft by the power of the Holy Spirit. I cause that spirit that is responsible for tormenting this boy. Who speaks that sound? Mama, Bertha, leave her. Here, yeah, Bertha, Bertha, find her. She looks like a fuller human. She, she understands how sir. Father, in the name of Jesus, perfect her. I curse this spirit. I take her out of these dungeons of death. Right now. belongs to you all the glory belongs to you oh god all the glory belongs to you all the glory belongs to you oh god hallelujah the last and greatest session of this meeting is where i begin to prophesy that's where people receive guest breakthroughs and testimonies we may not be able to minister to everybody one by one but i want you to know that god is going to bless you peter adola is going to come up and for the next 10 minutes or so he's going to lead us through a dimension of worship and praise unto god and the moment that happens i will come back and we'll take up the last session with prophecy and then we'll take a few announcements we're done everybody give jesus praise as we celebrate him
Father, we love you. Father, we love you. Father, we love you. And we've come to let you know. Father, we love you. Father, we love you. And we come to let you know You are the most I God Father, we worship you You are the most I God Father, we worship you You are the most high You. Father, we love you. Oh, Father, we love you. Father, we love you. And we're here to let you know. You are the most I God. Join me, say, Father. Father, we worship you. You are the most I God. Father, we worship. Say, Father, we worship you. You are the most I God. Father, we worship. Father, we worship you. Oh, oh. you are the most I God. Father, we worship you. Say to the Lord, you are the most high God. Father, we wait on you. Oh, you are the most high God. We wait on you, Jesus. We wait on you, Jesus. You are the most high God. We love you, Jesus. Oh, we worship. You are the most high Jesus, Father, we reverence you. You are the most I God. Father, we worship you. Father, we love you, Jesus. Here to let you know. We open up our hearts. 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 Come fill us, Jesus, with the water of life. We open up our hearts to you, Jesus. We worship you. Come and pour out your spirit on every flesh, oh God. We worship you. We pour our love on you. We pour our love on you. Till every flesh is crucified in us. We worship you. You are the most high God. Father, we worship you. You are the most high. You are the most high God. We worship. Father, we worship you. We worship. You are the most high God. We worship. Father, we worship. Say we worship. You are the most high God. We worship. Father, we worship. With our hands lifted up, we worship. With our hands lifted up, we worship.
worship. We lift up our hands it's to you, Jesus. Oh, oh, with our hands lifted up, we worship you, Jesus. We worship. Yes, we worship Jesus, the King of Glory, the Lamb of God who was slain before the foundations of the earth. We worship you, Jesus. Yeah. Desperate for you. I'm desperate for you. Say I'm lost without you. Say it. I am lost without you. I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you. There's no me without you. There's no me without you. Say it. No me without you. There's no life without you. There's no life without you. Oh. Lord, I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for you. I need a turn. I'm desperate for. Oh. I'm desperate for you. Desperate for you, Jesus. I can breathe without you. I'm lost without your shame. I'm lost without I'm lost without you say. I'm lost without you. Church say I'm lost without you now say. I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you. I'm lost And the rain of your presence for us Say I am lost without you Cover us with your grace, Jesus <laughs> Say I am lost without you And the rain of your presence, oh God I'm lost without you I'm lost without you I'm lost without you We give you all the glory and the honor and adoration to your holy name. Yes, I'm lost without your hands, oh God. I'm lost without you. Here is power in the name of Jesus. Here is power. Break every chain, say Break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. Woo! Say Break every chain. 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 Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Come on, say, break every chain, break every chain, every 
Hallelujah to your name. Song, join me and say, You have a wonderful Say hallelujah as the highest prayer. Oh, hallelujah. 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 The, the chorus here, hallelujah. Just leave him there. It's okay. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We have a few minutes and then we're done. I salute everyone. We'll have the last prayer session and then I'll just prophesy and speak over our lives. So can we all rise inside and outside? I will praise the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. I will worship Him and give a praise to Him alone. He who was and is and is to come, I will sing before His throne forever. Never. 
you're holy, holy. Yes, you are holy, holy. Hallelujah, mighty one. Psalm 66, verse 3, please. Our last prayer session. We're going to be praying and we're going to be making decrees and commanding our lives and destinies. He told Job, has thou commanded thy money? Or are you just allowing it to happen? Believers have authority, but we must put the authority to use. And then we compel these powers to submit. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. He says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. I want you to believe in the prayer session we're about to have right now. Very brief, but very impactful. And I want you to pray and pray like your heart depends on it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, when Moses began to advocate the release of the nation of Israel, God's covenant people, into their promised land, when the pressure got so much, Pharaoh negotiated. He said, all right, let, we have a deal. The men can go, leave the women and the children. Leave the factors that represent the continuity of that race, the women and the children, let the men go because he knew they would perish. And Moses said, no way. We're going with our wives, our children, our cattle, and everything. So we're going to pray. The Bible says, now Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And it says God had blessed him in all things, not some things all things. It's, it's possible for you to experience breakthrough and advancement in one area of your life, but then you are tied in another area. Second Kings chapter 5 tells us about a man who was the captain of the Syrian army. The Bible says he was a great man. He did exploits, fought valiantly, but he was leprous. So we want to address those buts. Those situations in our lives, yes, you have done well, you are anointed, yes, this and that, but there are certain areas, it must be total victory. Rise up on your feet. I want you to shout it after me. Say in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on, Koinonia. Say in the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, I come against every power that attempts to fight my destiny. In the name of Jesus, I declare a release of every other area of my life that is under attack. And I declare this morning that it is my time for breakthrough. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice. Come on, pray, 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 people of God. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Mention the areas in your life that are pending. That need the breakthrough hand of God. Mention those areas specifically. Please lift your voice and pray. Take this session seriously. We're almost done. Are you praying? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Pray for every area of your life that is yet to experience breakthrough. Decree and declare that after this vigil, you will begin to experience breakthrough in that area by the power of the Holy Spirit. We ward off the powers of hell standing against our lives and destinies. Are you praying? Om brata so so prata kete bela de bosh, ekrete kete bela de bosh, monto koso to poroto bosh, em proto koto bala de bala de bosh. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Was you praying? When Moses finally.
convinced Pharaoh to release them. Watch this. As they released them, while they were going, the Bible says they met a Red Sea. So they had left Egypt, but there was a Red Sea in front of them. Are we together now? And the Egyptians were back to capture them. And they began to cry. And in Exodus chapter 14, Moses said, Stand still. Stand still. He says, The Egyptians you see today, oh, you may have seen them for 430 years, but today, the Egyptians you see today, he says that you will not see them. And then he said, Moses, verse 15, now Moses was crying before God. And he said, Why will you cry? Tell the people to move forward make advancement listen this prayer we're going to pray is important because many of us this prayer will supply courage hear me it's time to move forward it's time to move forward in business it's time to move forward in your career are you hearing what i'm saying you are going to pray and say lord everything keeping me down maybe it's the failure of the past maybe it's the lies of satan he has lied to you maybe you are falling again you entered a relationship, it did not work. You have refused to enter another one to get married. You did business and it did not work. And the devil is stopping you from moving forward. You, you tried to give birth and you had a miscarriage. But right now, he said, tell the people to move forward. The signs do not go before you, they follow you. When you take the step of faith, God is ministering to someone. It's time to get back. The anointing is still there where you fell is where you will rise and excel the anointing is still there lift your voice and prophesy i'm moving forward go ahead and pray pray in my ministry i'm moving forward i refuse to allow challenges and limitations stop me inside and outside i'm moving forward in every area of my life you wanted to start a building project a challenge came and you have refused to move forward you tried to get admission you tried once twice it didn't work listen it says tell the people to move forward koinonia i announce to you an anointing by an encounter with power is upon your life to begin to move forward now prophesy lord i'm moving forward i break those barriers i refuse to see challenges that project is doable the project is doable the marriage is doable come on pray now the ministry can rise is achievable it's achievable is achievable i may have been thrown down once but it is achievable there is still an anointing hallelujah hallelujah my bible says there is hope for a tree even though it be cut down samson was a mighty man of power but for some reason he was anointed to be the judge over Israel. And for some reasons, he fell into the trap of a woman called Delilah. And that trap costed him his eyes. They plucked out his eyes and they shaved him. You would have thought that would be the end of Samson. Once a giant, the one who threatened the Philistines, the one who tore a lion and brought honey out of it, the one who removed a city gate, God is ministering to some people here. You have tasted power and honor. But something happened somewhere and brought you down. But tonight God is speaking to you that there is hope for a tree. You can rise again. When they took Samson and they took him to the temple and they were mocking him before our God, he prayed a prayer. He prayed a prayer of restoration that Lord, this one last time, let this anointing come upon me. And the Bible says he pushed. He killed more people in his death than he did in his lifetime. Can I tell you something? You should know the difference between failure 
as an event and failure as a person we live in a generation where every time you fail there are so many people coming to prove to you justifying their prophecies are you getting me now you start a business or a company it fails and everybody tells you you see you start a ministry genuinely called by god no growth there is failure and people tell you stop wasting your time a gentleman gets up and says i'm going to get married and no finances no resources no job and everybody tells him you'll be a failure or maybe a student you went to the board and you saw that you're on probation let me announce to you tonight that it is never over until you choose to give up are you hearing what i'm saying i won't give up no i won't give up i'll keep pressing on till my answer comes i won't give up lord i won't give up i'll keep holding on until my change comes i will never forget our first crusade our first crusade in Joss, you would have rated it maybe a failed crusade because they were not people they were not much we saw miracles we saw mighty things but the people were few we were stranded listen a crusade would happen the crusade was to start by 5 30 as about as at three o'clock the car was still spoiled we we're still on our way going i'll never forget the driver tried and tried and tried we didn't even have enough money we just had enough money to take us there how we were going to survive are you getting what i'm saying listen when you see a successful man don't just celebrate the stories ask the person for the pains and the scars successful people are those who have forced any closed door to open they are not those who do not have challenges are you getting the point now i will never forget that crusade was powerful immediately after the crusade the sound guys were standing 150,000 were to pay them it looks like child's play now but then it meant a lot because even if everybody in the ministry then came together we would not be able to solve it but we knew that god sent us i knew what god had told me a great crusade the first crusade we did not even have we could not rent video cameras i'll never forget the humiliation that i went through from the sound people it was it was such a bitter humiliation those people frustrated my life literally because i could not afford it i'll never forget one doctor in chemistry department on hearing on this situation she took five thousand and sold it as a seed it was a disaster i would have easily given up and said that's it lord no ministry again imagine the millions of lives within this country and around the world who have been blessed by this ministry if i had given up at that point god is speaking to someone peter tried to catch fish all night nothing happened he would have packed up successful people and those who are audacious don't mind the mediocre around your journey to success. They will always wait there to make you feel like you're a failure. They will always make to claim their prophecy is self-fulfilling. When you succeed, I guarantee you, every one of them will change their reports about you. Nobody has time to celebrate you on your way to success. But when you arrive, the worst that can happen is that you can be criticized. But no man can deny that this is the finger of God. I remember Dr. Paul and Enche. 99 right when they went to abuja him his wife and two pastors were staying in one small room not by will that was all they could afford you would have called them failures do you know what it means for a man married with his wife and you cannot afford a house you carry your wife and two pastors you are staying in the same room but that's what it's been called today listen I want you to know right now we are going to pray you are going to challenge your fears 
and challenge your limitations those voices that have spoken to you and made you feel that you cannot become anything they may be the voices of good people they may be the voices of sincere people but i come to prove them wrong lift your voice and pray in the name of jesus everyone shout it in the name of jesus i'm determined to succeed by the anointing of the holy spirit in the name of jesus my failures of yesterday will not stop me from achieving the breakthroughs of tomorrow i receive courage and fresh grace to face this mountain and to surmount it lift your voice and pray grace oh god lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray shake it take it take it take it no weeping and just for a night joy comes with the morning no weeping and just for a night the lord is speaking to you joy comes with the morning you didn't get the admission but it does not mean it cannot be gotten the marriage didn't work out the travel abroad did not work out it does not mean you cannot travel the business did not work out it does not mean you are a failure you may not have money now you may not have connection now nobody may recognize your anointing but keep pressing keep pressing hallelujah hallelujah was he praying you are going to pray and cry for supernatural persistence and endurance listen let me tell you you can ask every one of the ministers here barack who ministered and peter adole manasseh pastor alpha ask all of them they will tell you stories and episodes of endurance listen there was a time in my life i was tightening and i was giving nothing was happening are you getting what i'm saying any man that just tells you it just happened like that lied to you i'm telling you there are seasons in your life where it looks like your heavens are closed although they are not closed are you getting what i'm saying nothing like a result is happening you are planting bearing precious seeds but nothing is happening as a man of god you know the anointing upon your life while you are laboring in the spirit nobody is recognizing your grace to invest in it you can be a great worshiper and for many years you may be moving around crying for just one open door but the doors may not open listen to me you can be a lady pretty and virtuous you've done everything you need to do in your strength sincerely speaking you've done everything you know a woman should do to be prepared for marriage before god and men everyone knows truly you are prepared for marriage all the demons to be casted have been casted out but no man is coming and vice versa for a man you may graduate with a great degree you have served you've even complimented on your degrees submitted cvs let me tell you something in every man's life there are seasons of persistence and endurance i want you to know this don't let any man fool you god is a god of speed not rush god does not rush he brings speed not rush there are seasons where you are proven the bible says john remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance there is something called a man's season of appearance you can manifest before your season of appearance and keep struggling trying to find relevance years ago he may remember we went for a meeting in, in kaduna a very powerful meeting and when we went there there was a man of god who was supposedly a bishop there was nothing bishop about him when you launch yourself without your season of appearance the man was there and after the meeting i i could not even figure one person who came to say kai man of god you blessed me 
the bishop was there moving around no friend no car no nothing we went to the restaurant he just sat down somewhere and was just taking his power house nobody was even encouraging him and i said in my mind lord if this is how it means to be a bishop i don't want this honor when god blesses you he brings honor with it when you launch yourself you will keep floating looking for relevance i'm speaking to many of us here we are at the verge of breakthroughs keep holding on there are times you don't need to do anything new you just need to keep doing what you are doing because what you are doing is not wrong if a baby we have a few babies around here if a baby suddenly decides to take one drum of breast milk that baby will not suddenly get up and become an adult because he took breast milk if an old man starves himself to die he will not suddenly become young because there was no food are you getting what i'm saying and jesus grew he didn't become he didn't jump and jesus grew in wisdom in stature and in favor with god and with men life is in dimensions are you hearing what i'm saying and there are times in your life you will need to wait listen you may be a man of god anointed it is true that god has spoken to you about ministry but for now all you'll be doing is cleaning tables be faithful you must receive grace for endurance because let me tell you hope defers makes the heart weary the heart of man is 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 very fragile the moment you wait after a season of practicing kingdom principles and you don't see results naturally speaking naturally speaking fatigue will come in you're going to lift your voice are you still tired we're rounding up this is a very important prayer point lift your voice and say after me in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus i receive grace for endurance i receive grace for persistence i receive grace for resilience i will wait I will be patient until my season of appearance. Lift your voice and pray. Patience, oh God. If you turn aside in the day of battle, it says your strength is small. Lift your voice and pray. Persistence, persistence, endurance in prayer, endurance in obedience. hallelujah two more prayer points the bible tells us that a virgin called mary was just minding her business one day suddenly an angel appears to her listen appears to her with a prophetic message thou art highly favored blessed are you among women and she wondered what salutation this was and the angel began to tell her that she was going to carry a baby and she said how shall these things be i know not a man just like god is telling you the same you who is standing one day you will own your television station and the world will be watching you and you look around and say how shall these things be and he said the power of the highest shall overshadow you watch this the moment God told Mary because her life at that time was an unusual life and then the angel recommended her to Elizabeth somebody who was carrying the same mystery and the same vision you will never make it in life if you are the only one who looks like you there must be people around your life that can identify no matter how mystical the instructions are there must be somebody around your life that can say although this looks strange i see that the hand of god is upon it loneliness 
in destiny has killed many people they are carrying visions they they have no other shoulder to lean on and mary went to elizabeth every other woman would have said you are very stupid tell us the rabbi you slept with that you are lying that a spirit got you pregnant but she went to a woman who had been barren for a long time so she's in a position that can identify with these kinds of supernatural things watch this and the bible says as soon as elizabeth mary and elizabeth saw the babies the destinies in their wombs leapt you need people around your life that can look at you and say that 300 million naira project is doable how much do you have 10 naira say yes i was once like that you need people in your life that can be crazy enough and you say sir i'm trusting god for a house or a car by the end of the year how much do you have two thousand he said you are even better than me when i was about to buy the car i had 500 naira suddenly you know you are not alone there is nothing as encouraging as finding a madman like you somebody who can agree with you and say it is doable it's a dangerous thing for a man of god dangerous thing for a businessman dangerous thing for a destiny shaker to be around people who do not have any experience that can engineer faith in you are you getting what i'm saying that you come and say my sister i want to share with you something don't be afraid though say what is it say do you know i don't have a womb and the lady will not say ah what is all that say abba your case is a simple case there was a woman like that it's not just that she didn't have a womb in fact her own was a, a bad case but she had twins you see that that's elizabeth you need to call for elizabeth to your life because many of us are about giving up on visions that are of god but there are no motivators there are no people to tell you it is doable who said you can't start a bank everybody say bank what nonsense are you talking about somebody tells you you can do it you can do it you can start the bank you pray them into your life are you getting me there are ladies right now this is august but you heard from god genuinely and you are trusting god to be settled by december you, if you meet a wrong person the person will look at you and say i have what nonsense how many months will it take for traditional marriage how many months will it take to raise offering uh, sorry to raise the uh, raise the money for the marriage how long will it take do you know how much wedding gown is do you know how much it means to rent a house do you have 1.5 million all those devilish things you need to throw those people away and meet somebody who tells you i i met my guy in october we married by december 15th it is possible lift your voice and say in the name of jesus i call forth to my life the elizabeths of my destiny say after me in the name of jesus i call into my life my destiny motivators may they come to encourage me in the name of jesus lift your voice and pray we call for the elizabeth we call for the elizabeth we call for the elizabeth men and women of similar vision men and women of similar passion men and women of similar vision men and women of similar passion hallelujah lift your hands everybody as i prophesy to us please i want you to receive it receive it with all your heart and receive it with a loud shout of amen the lord gave me a revelation on the creative power of prophecy and we've had all kinds of humbling testimonies he says son of man can these bones live and he said only down the west then he said prophesy speak to these bones speak to these situations as far as i am concerned there is nothing called impossible not when god steps in it is impossible when there are men 
but not when God steps in. I pray for you right now in the name that is above all names that every door that before now has been closed over your life and your destiny by the anointing of the Holy Spirit return to find that door open now. I prophesy it upon you return to find that door open in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak over your life where your strength is limited you have done everything you know to do I'm declaring upon you right now let a fresh anointing take you through the remaining part of the journey in the name of Jesus Christ where your human strength has stopped may an anointing come and pick you up in the name of Jesus Christ when Jesus was about to start his ministry a voice spoke no matter how anointed you are it will take somebody to announce you please listen i show you a mystery no matter how anointed you are a midwife although she's a midwife she won't deliver a baby by herself when it is time for her to deliver she will need other midwives no man can bless himself no man can endorse himself are you hearing what i'm saying a voice had to be spoke out had to speak from heaven and say this is my beloved son and he commanded the world to hear him lift your hands let me speak over your destiny your destiny remains grounded until a voice can speak in the realm of the spirit a simple prophetic word but it's a profound law i'm praying for you right now by the anointing of the holy spirit everything that has covered your glory everything that has covered your your gift and your potential from being seen desired and celebrated i speak right now is your time for celebration i speak right now is your time for celebration i speak it to you right now is your time for recognition it's time for your gift to be noted it's time for men to pay attention to what you carry in the name of Jesus Christ and I call for the helpers of destiny the wine pressers the bakers those who will speak to the king on your behalf I call them into your life right now in the name of Jesus Christ I declare upon you that all the years that the canker worm has eaten all the years the palmer worm has eaten what you think is forgone what you think is a waste i'm prophesying to you right now may there be double restoration may there be double restoration double restoration i pray for every family represented here in the name that is above all names not only will you receive visitation I release visitation to families 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 in the name of Jesus let there be visitations may the Lord wipe the tears of families in the name of Jesus Christ every project you want to embark on these hands that are lifted I put an anointing upon it and I force it to prosper in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ everything your hand embarks upon in the name that is above all names may you prosper in it in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over your finances listen when you are not empowered financially you will be limited in many ways there's no long story about it hallelujah cry yet say in Zechariah 1:17a, thus saith the Lord my city's true prosperity shall be spread abroad and I will yet comfort Zion it takes finances to fund your assignment it takes finances for you to move forward lift your hands I pray for you in the name of Jesus every power limiting your finances every power limiting you from obeying the principles that bring increase i set you free from it right now in the name of jesus christ every spirit of greed that keeps you in poverty and penury i set you free from it right now in the name of jesus 
I'm prophesying upon your life by the mystery of divine supply in the name of Jesus may God send into your life people opportunities and resources in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for your spiritual life after spending time praying and waiting for eight hours in a vigil in the name of Jesus let fresh fire come upon your spiritual life fresh fire come upon your spiritual life many of you will return back and you begin to see dimensions you never walked in suddenly activated in your life in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for every church and every ministry here grace to step into the next level of impact grace to step into the next level of impact in the name of Jesus Christ I release a breakthrough anointing upon every endeavor of your life beginning from this morning let it begin to speak in the name of Jesus Christ lift your hands and worship the Lord give him praise hallelujah hallelujah let's take the following announcements and we're out of this place we thank the Lord for strength for grace to stretch it through now please listen carefully I want to announce to us that next week is going to be a very special program here is the practicum of our school of ministry students hallelujah I think you should celebrate them if you don't know what it's all about I want you to come that means our students will be handling the service everything from beginning to end will just be here supervising and assessing them um, you will be mightily blessed please invite all your friends and everyone to come around time is 6 p.m exceptional voice training school a voice training school belonging to um one of our people david dam where is he where's david dam okay that's his voice training school and um it's only for singers and vocalists the admission form is 200 naira the school fees for admitted singers is 4,000 only. Interested persons should meet him immediately after the service. Believe me, he's a fabulous vocalist and um, he's done a lot in the area of um, vocal proficiency and he's ready to invest and pour into many people. So make sure you are part of it. Project 10,000 is still on. Please be part of it. If you are not, there's free but limited um, bus transport immediately after the service. Those going to Shika and Congo, please wait at the projector stand outside. You can book for your counseling. Sorry, I was not around last week for counseling. But you can book right after the service for your counseling. Be, remem be reminded that all bookings stop on Sunday, 6 p.m. And then messages will be sent to those who are booked. Please, if you wait till 9 o'clock or 9.30 and you don't get an SMS, you can call the protocol line. The ushering department, um, Komoda Joseph DK, should please meet the ushers to collect his school ID card. If you're here, meet the ushers for your ID card. And then this goes to everyone who has misplaced any item in the course of the service. Please, you meet the ushers. The Conference of Nigerian Christian Engineering Students concerts tagged engineering in all aspects of life is holding a program today the 8th of august time is 9 a.m the venue is the new engineering lecture theater faculty of engineering featuring academic academia engineering in industry leadership entrepreneurship um, ministers will be engineer abdul malik courage professor ibadun i'll be ministering there too and engineer emmanuel obeka so you're invited, especially for those who um, are engineers or engineering students. The prayer department invites the house for her prayer meeting at Rema Chapel on Tuesday by 4 p.m. Hallelujah. Please take note of our official lines. You can use them. Department of Protocol and Logistics, they have two lines. And then um, the media department, you can also have their details if you do not have this is free you can pick up one with the ushers hallelujah i want you with an ovation to celebrate those who are worshiping with us for the first time 
if this is your first time here please make your way to the front everyone who is worshiping with us for the first time koinonia keep clapping we're almost done do this for them god bless you god bless you god bless you celebrate them please make your way to the front no matter how far we want to pray for you and bless you the lord brought you by his spirit keep clapping koinonia thank you so much for coming the lord brought you by his spirit to lift you we honor you and we thank you for coming hallelujah wow let's celebrate our mommy mrs ono god bless you ma just wanted her hallelujah thank you ma thank you thank you for all the people who are here god bless you hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah thank you for coming and worshiping with us this is koinonia a meeting put together by eternity network international we're here every fridays and this was a special vigil a special program i know that your life will never be the same in the name of jesus we have a prayer and a blessing for you and we want you to receive it with all your heart in jesus name stretch your hands saints of god and let's prophesy over their lives we speak over your life that is from glory to glory that you have come and spent time in his presence i declare that you'll never be the same in the name of the lord jesus christ you're experiencing the power of god in your life beginning from today the evidence of your coming here will show in the mighty name of jesus christ every challenge you came here with we declare that it becomes a testimony in the name of jesus we bless you with fresh hunger for god fresh hunger for the things of the spirit may you go back and experience the honor of god upon your life in unprecedented dimensions if you have been running go and begin to fly in the name of jesus you will move at the pace of the spirit there's no limitation upon your life we bless you we release upon you the blessings of this house let everything you do and touch prosper in the name of jesus christ thank you so much now we just request you to do just one thing before you come back to your seat um there are people who will welcome you more warmly will have your details and they'll communicate just a few messages to you and you'll be back to your seat thank you very much i just wanted to follow the lady waving her hands they'll have your details very briefly and then you'll be back to your seat can you celebrate them koinonia thank you so so much Praise the Lord. Um, they still have another song, so we're going to worship them. Is that all right? Or do you want to come back? Do we give you another chance again? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay. I'll ask you up again in the course of the service. God bless you. Let's lift our hands and give him all the praise. Lift your voice in one minute and cry for a visitation tonight. Let it be a sweet sound to you, O oh God. For a visitation tonight, oh God. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'd like you to greet one another. Please be seated. Let's get to the business of the night. Hallelujah. 
Jesus, we give you praise. I want to appreciate everyone for the sacrifice. It takes love for God to appear before him every now and then. And I know that the Lord will do us good tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Before I go on with the teaching tonight, I, I just want to challenge us on two things very quickly. Number one is just to remind us of the fact that um, what is happening in this place is a very prophetic move of God. Um, but then you never really understand the move of God as a peace you have to look at the broader picture every man's destiny what we call assignment whether for an individual for a church a ministry or for a territory is their contribution i like using that word contribution because it gives us um, a realization that there are other facets a contribution to the big picture god has an idea he's a, he has an agenda we've taught again and again on the agenda of god the book of colossians the first two chapters examine intently the agenda of god it tells us the predeterminate counsel of god hallelujah uh, it's important that we do not allow the frequent activity week after week to get us carried away such that we do not uh, realize that god is actually going somewhere with us this is not just an endless pursuit a loyalty to a vision a loyalty to a religious activity that keeps us uh, psychologically healthy that we're in touch with god this is more than that praise the lord it's important that we we understand that this is not just a ministry this is not just a church this is a move of god and that we are through this medium connecting to the bigger picture that which god is doing upon the surface of the earth when you realize this you will come with every sense of seriousness hallelujah the second thing i want to talk very quickly about is to fine-tune our expectations it's important that whenever you come for koinonia generally speaking whenever you go to any ministry any church um, take time to study the operation of god in that area because god works in different ways through different platforms according to many factors his predeterminate counsel for them their level of alignment to his will the level of permission they have given him in that season to manifest are we together now when god calls a people when god commissions a ministry an assignment there are usually certain graces please pay attention graces anointings and dimensions of the operation of the spirit that is um committed to those people so those who come must be aware that I am coming to a ministry that through grace and through corporate alignment have been able to activate certain dimensions of realities in the spirit. And that coming to that ministry can make it possible. I was teaching the prayer department on Tuesday during their prayer and I was telling them that individuals carry prophetic atmospheres. Are we together now? when you come under the influence of their atmospheres within that period you can tap into the reality that would not have happened with your atmosphere are we together now so when you keep doing that over a long time there is a transference there is an impartation but you see if you don't realize what is obtainable bishop oyedeko will say proximity is not equal to connectivity that you are close to an anointing and an atmosphere does not guarantee that you will contact something tangible. So the Lord impressed in my heart really to remind us again, to let us know the dimension of him that is available in this place. Please, 
um, ladies and gentlemen, I want us to understand that this is not some ambition of a man to try to reach people. I know that there are pastors who love teaching as a vocation. They just love to see sinners saved. That's wonderful. But um, this is not one of those platforms. Believe me. I want you to know that what is happening right now is pivotal to the universal move of the spirit. This is not a minor contribution to what God is doing on earth. If you, if you see it that way, you will, you will not give your best. There's been a lot of prophecy about Zaria. Right from before some of us were born. There's been a lot of prophecy about this that is happening right now and in this season. So, we're not just stumbling into a move of God resident within the north. No. There is a mystery behind this move of God that is coming in this season and what God is doing. And so, I want us to understand that we are prophecy being played. Jesus, in the book of Luke chapter 4, the Bible says, reading from verse 16 downward, that he took the book the, the 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 scroll where it was written about him where prophet isaiah wrote about him right and he began to read it the spirit of the lord is upon me and then when he read down he said this day in other words what you see is a manifestation of that when the holy ghost came on the day of pentecost peter told them this is that in other words look you are now seeing the manifestation of something I pray that one day as you study the Bible, you will see koinonia there. That as you study, you will suddenly connect and say, God said this will happen. We are seeing that this is not just a circumstance, but this is prophecy. Hallelujah. I need to tell us this so that our hearts be prepared. It's very, very important. There is nothing, listen, there is no major move of God that happens without being spoken about. I used to see these days, years ago in visions. I never knew it would be this way. Glimpses and pictures of this and even the next levels after this. And I knew that it was, you see, these kinds of platforms is called an election of grace. It's not about prayer and fasting. It's not about just wishing. No. Everyone who desires to press into God as we'll be learning can find a place in destiny. However, there is an election of grace. Are we together now? God always has a move in every territory and every city. And it just so happens that by divine predetermination the hand of god can rest upon individuals and he will open them uniquely to certain dimensions of his person and vest them with responsibilities to reveal that dimension within their territory this is one of such things you are saying please value it i want you to value it i want you to value it the days that will come will show you that this is not just an ambition of a man of God. You know how pastors say, look, we are going places. And the members say, I'll be there with you. This is not one of those things. It's not just that we are going places. You will see how this move fits into prophecy. It will happen. I've lived my entire life and spent my life like the wise men who kept looking at the stars walking this season never knew that it would be a privilege to be one of those who will frontier dimension of this move but i was more than willing to participate i was desperate i i insisted that the move will not happen in my absence hallelujah so you must you must be very intentional Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, if you are here seated in this place tonight, it's because there is prophecy upon your life. 
believe that if there was no prophecy upon your life you would not be here i'm not motivating you i am telling you that among all these people there are still some people who this prophecy resonates with that's why god made sure that you have to be here in this season and it's important to pay attention so you don't lose your place the fact that there is an election upon your life does not guarantee that you will manifest it are we together yeah the principle of substitution is that which we see in this in, in scripture again and again that the mandate of a man not just his mantle his entire assignment can be given to another we read about saul in the bible right saul the son of kish a time came he was there seated on the throne but the entire mandate had been given to him terah the father of abraham the very assignment of abraham terah was to be the father of nations but he messed up because of lack of alignment and the mandate went to abraham when judas iscariot betrayed jesus christ god insisted that there had to be a replacement for him you see that so brothers and sisters please realize that for every one of us seated here you are not seated here for your sake you are seated for the sake of a generation listen for their sake listen for the sake of your children listen for the sake of those who are hungry for god but may never have access to come to these territories. Listen as a school. Pay attention as though you are being trained for something great. I've always given my life and the presence of God and the word of God utmost seriousness. You never see me distracted in the house of God and in the presence of God. You must please pay attention. This is not just a time of worship a worship service it's an impartation there is something happening to you there is growth there is ascendance in the spirit four things i want you to always expect when you come here number one this place is a place of encounter please never forget this a place of encounter is the hallmark of this ministry encounters encounters with jesus encounters with the spirit of the living god encounters with the word of god and by word of god i don't just mean what you are holding in your hand the scripture that has been explained that has the breath of the spirit upon it capable of producing results in your life encounters whenever you come here you must expect it that something resonates from eternity to your spirit you know that god is in this place through the worship through the testimonies this program was designed intentionally to stimulate encounters from the opening prayers the worship and everything that happens it's it's intentional i want you to know that it was done with encounters in mind so that whether you are seated inside or outside as you hear the word beyond a man there will be a remarkable encounter visionary encounters yes but that the reality an encounter is an experience that supernaturally communicates the reality of a thing to you it's called an encounter when when i touch this flower for instance my touching it gives me a feel an emotional connection to it that's what an encounter is that by the agency of the holy spirit something happens to you in this place that draws you near that, that nearness of the presence of god is experienced number two whenever you come to this place expect remarkable transformation
the lifespan of your spiritual stubbornness when you come here is one day in 24 hours something must start fighting you are we together no matter how hardened you are when you come into this place you can choose to argue but it's like a virus it has caught up with your spirit hallelujah you can pretend uh, there's nothing usual about it but i tell you if you come for just one meeting and you never attend you will never be able to be comfortable with the devil again it's, it's like a cancer it's a see there are mysteries that support the things we do it's not just happening there is a revelation that sponsors this have you seen a man you talk to a man and he pretends as though what you said did not get to him then when he goes back he starts thinking about it and say cut but this person cheated me oh that's what happens here so when the word of god comes upon your spirit there is a system that has been designed by grace that it stays it sticks to you and starts fighting everything that is not of god hallelujah radical transformation i trust that god will grant us grace that would be able to fetch in the testimonies from the now millions of people literally without exaggeration of people that have been blessed just through these teachings 70 percent of the people that have been blessed through this ministry have never seen me as a person there is a mystery to these teachings the presence of god and its power to change people i've gone for meetings and seen people talk and i thought i was hearing myself and i looked at them and they said sir you have never seen me but i have 200 of your messages i have 250 of your messages i have your message till last week that's the power of transformation to change state right so when you come here there is a paradigm shift the messages are so designed not just to whet your appetite spiritually there are lots of messages that stimulate you to desire the spirit more but there are not definite things you hold i teach especially in points because i want your mind to be able to hold on to something when you want to create a paradigm shift the new ideas you are bringing must be clear enough for the people to understand and receive we are replacing old philosophies we are replacing old ideas about god about life and this is happening by the power of the word hallelujah mental and intellectual alignment still part of radical transformation one of the things that the lord taught me as i have worked with the lord and i've incorporated it even in this ministry is balance everybody say balance i've said it again one of the things that i have um i have been disturbed about in the body of christ is the degree of imbalance imbalance can hurt you as much as a lie are, are you following me now imbalance can do you almost the same catastrophe as a lie imbalance and lies is like a man who is inside fire then you bring him out and leave him in a desert it's better than fire but he will still die are we together now so you notice this intentional balancing of spiritual realities as we teach because it is important god will judge me if i mislead you i take advantage of your openness i must commend the loyalty of the people everyone who comes around to this ministry i know you love me i know you love the word of god you believe in what god is doing and there are many of us here who have opened up our hearts that everything that comes from this altar is of god and so i as a person and the leadership generally we owe a responsibility to make sure your convictions are such that can stand the test of time the bible says to be careful lest what you call light be darkness you can hold on to a wrong philosophy forever you can excel in a dimension of the knowledge of god and fail in another understanding 
that you understand God in the area of prayer and fasting does not mean you understand other facets of him chances are that if I teach you on the anointing and the Holy Spirit you will think I'm a remarkable preacher until you hear my perspective on marriage my perspective on marriage can be so imbalanced and faulty but you will leverage on my accuracy are we together now you will leverage on my accuracy in the area of the anointing to mean I know what I'm saying. That's the reason why every man of God must be on a consistent passion, a passionate pursuit to update his spiritual curriculum as far as the move of God is concerned. So you don't mislead people. I've heard ministers that I respect their perspectives in different areas, but I've heard them communicate other areas and I am shocked to see their degree of ignorance. It's like someone who, imagine someone who is growing and one hand is growing so well and then one leg is not growing. You can imagine that kind. I have been obsessed about balance. One of my greatest concerns in life is that at the end of my life, it will not be that I've believed a lie. Hallelujah. And that I've taught that lie to people that have influenced millions of people to believe a lie and they are running with that lie and then i ruin their lives with no opportunity to recall them back brothers and sisters this is why we pray for utterance we don't pray because we are scared of preaching we pray for alignment in the spirit we pray that the things that are communicated that even after 10 years that even when there is need for upgrading it doesn't become that that was a lie and men of God here, those who are pastors, maybe inside, outside, I challenge you. Do not take for granted. Never trivialize the place of adequate spiritual preparation before you come to the pulpit to preach. There are pastors, now I'm not against people, but there are pastors who sit down, cross their leg, watch football, you know, eat and do everything and say, ah, it's time. And they just come and say, look, where did we even stop last week? No, don't play with people like that. Take them seriously. The church institution is the most powerful mind control institution in Africa. It's more powerful than banks. It's more powerful than schools. You're only in the university or any institution of learning for three, four, or five years or six years. And then you are done. But every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Friday, every Thursday, and some churches every day, you are in the church submitting your spirit to the influence of a man do you know what it means to sit down and allow a man transfer his ideologies to you that's a risk it's a big risk because our realities are framed by our ideologies so you must be sure that the person you are submitting your spirit and your mind to you will inevitably make decisions based on the parameters he's given you I will not live to mislead people i won't teach you error that's the reason why we labor and at any time i find out that what i've communicated is not accurate i do not have any embarrassment to come back and say look let's realign we have seen something clearer hallelujah is god speaking to us expect transformation you can measure transformation your degree of change your thinking the way you analyze things your comprehension of the workings of the spirit this is part of the indices that we use to measure spiritual maturity you cannot be uh, coming here week in week out whether indoors or outside and then something is not changing about your life you can't be doing the same things, saying the same things, having the same convictions. No, the word of God alters your convictions. Something about you must change. Something about you must change. Something about your prayer life must change. Something about your passion for the word. Something about your interpretation of the word. Something about the ideology of God you knew growing up must shift. It must be altered. Are we together now? Something about the ministry of the Holy Spirit must change in your life. If that is not happening, you are not changing. 
you are not changing I detest stagnancy in my life like cancer I detest it I'm obsessed with progress I like to see progress that's why I hate stagnancy anyone who is close to me knows that I'm constantly in a state of transition change you can't be in the same level for a long time intellectually physically when we look at developing nations or underdeveloped nations part of the hallmark of underdevelopment is stagnancy there are some of us there was one stone near your house from the time you were born that stone is still there nobody has had the initiative that why don't we make this road better it's still there as a monument that does not motivate anything only brings pain and regret you remember they flogged you near that stone you remember that's where they drove you out of the house nothing to inspire you the word of god should change you that at the end of every koinonia service you should just sit down like this and get up i like it when the word of god enters people and i study the reactions of people to the word not just oh preach preacher that's there's a place for that but that your spirit is is receiving something and you're saying look what am i doing is is god is giving me too much opportunity i'm wasting grace i'm making the word of god of none effect let the word of god challenge me he said the spirit entered into me ezekiel 2 from verse 1 and 2 and set me upon my feet the spirit entered when he spake unto me he brought an idea that is superior to that which i have known and it compels change change with results immediately that you can get up and make certain resolutions immediately make certain vows and commitments enter into certain strong personal covenants with god on account of what you have heard the bible says meditate on these things it says give yourself wholly to them it says that you're profiting brothers and sisters ask god how much i pray for you i don't think i pray for you i pray for myself one tenth of the way i pray for you and my prayer is not god give them cars give them houses that's a stupid prayer the prayer is oh god let there be such radical fellowship of the mystery that's what will produce every other thing you know what it means to have fellowship with a mystery that you come into oneness with these mysteries you know them you are persuaded about their reality and they begin to produce remarkable results in your life financial prosperity spiritual growth is never a thing of joy to me i don't know about other preachers but i hate being the only one i know it's supposed to be a wise business strategy but i hate being the only one who can produce certain levels of results unlike many preachers it is my joy when I see the grace and the anointing being reproduced in people, it gives me great joy. So it pains me when after a long time, our level of spiritual metamorphosis is slow. We must step up this year in the name of Jesus Christ. Say amen. You see, if you don't step up, a time will come, you will think, that what I'm teaching you is a lie because you will be frustrated are we together now you will be frustrated number three the third thing you must expect every time this will even help you to know the kinds of people to invite you must expect revival revival and awakening this is a place a portal in the spirit where people who have been weary spiritually where people who have given up maybe people who used to carry mantles and graces pastors who used to walk with fire 
churches that used to burn something happened for whatever reason this is the place to come and find restoration that you can say look i don't know what is wrong with me i used to love god i used to be passionate now i don't know what is happening let me go and find out part of the vision god has given us is to make this place a place of refiring a place of revival hallelujah that in in the days of the generals they had places the doors of the churches were open 24 hours there were times it was like they had hosted heaven in that city you didn't even need a pastor if something was wrong with you just go there and lie down we've had a few of those places even in this place many of you do not know some years ago in the campus where it used to be long tennis court there were so much spiritual investments in that place it became an open heavens literally that's when you see people carry their results probation they just go and lie down with rechargeable no prayer they're just saying lord kill me here if if it it, it it was called a court where matters of destiny were settled a sister who no brother is coming to just goes there and say lord i'm here I'm here for you I'm, I'm here for you and i'm telling you mantles that fell upon people this is a preface to what i'm about to share tonight we must restore mantles back to the church we must restore physical portals on earth where men can run to like cities of refuge it's a terrible thing when your spirit is affected and there's no place like a hospital where you can go and be sure imagine if all the hospitals in nigeria go on strike will give birth on the road people will die in cars the moment somebody has an accident we run and you see the confidence of the doctors you are welcome they don't move with hospitals around they station it in a place and you see all kinds of skills to get to the hospital those who trek those on bike they just want to get there because they know if i arrive i'm i don't even know what is wrong with me i think it's headache but let the doctor speak and when certain doctors try and it fails they refer you to certain people who have labored in this medical field they are called specialists they look at you and they say go and lie down we're operating you something is wrong ah doctor what lie down we have seen many of these kind of cases you are not feeling fine Do we have those kinds of spiritual platforms in the body of Christ today? Every city is supposed to have these provisions. When a city does not have that provision, there is no apostolic authority over their city. The hallmark of true apostolic authority is to have a center that represents the place of kingdom activities in a city. Where the law springs forth and governs the activities of a city. Please, I want you to hear what I'm saying. You can know that darkness prevails over a city by finding out whether there are apostolic authorities. It's not a name. It's not a title. It's an office. They are the gatekeepers of the happenings of God in that city. They communicate in partnership with the prophetic when seasons change and they alert the church. When darkness is about to enter that city, they are the eyes that see and stand on behalf of the city stop coin on here for one month and see what will happen in this city that's when you will know what we represent in the spirit never make a mistake that is just the activity of young people god's idea is that in every city there must be apostolic authorities but because of the disalignment of many people those who have called have, have been called have refused to align God will have to multiply grace and spread the influence of a territory to take care of others while he raises those who will stand there. This is the concept of multiplication of grace. When people refuse the alignment and the price of the spirit, God will have to come to his servant and say, this was initially not in your curriculum, but to not to frustrate my counsel, I know how uneasy it is for you but i will multiply your grace you see that when i multiply your grace i will stretch your boundaries so that your apostolic coverage like a territory will also enter certain dimensions you will know 
when an apostolic authority has expanded you will see the influence of that ideology see let me tell you the church in nigeria our order of ministry is wrong because the heads of the church in nigeria are pastors i don't mean pastors like kaito it was never that design but there is a sudden restoration If a pastor ever functions and a prophet ever functions and an evangelist ever functions if they do not do this in affiliation with apostolic authorities they will get into error because you see the primary of an assignment of the of the apostolic office is not just teaching is kingdom governance they administrate the distribution of the realities of the spirit committed to that dispensation and they supervise its safe delivery any true apostle of God that you know is a hard person. The word of God is like fire and it has nothing to do with temperament. The grace will alter you to make sure you deliver at that pace. Even if you are a quiet person. They're coming from afar. They're coming from afar. Oh, 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 If our parents understood this structure many of them will never be where they are now they are sincere people but they are victims of the disorganization of the church so they had nobody to learn and nobody to challenge who was lying to them are we together the church structure was so designed so that anybody can teach anything and claim his 20 years in ministry when it comes to these matters is by the spirit no it's by the spirit you don't say I'm 120 years old and you are teaching nonsense and misleading God's people. Brothers and sisters, the spiritual protocol has been observed for your progress in the spirit. I want you to know this and take advantage of it. We are not in error as to the strategies that will build you. If you don't build this a lapse on your own path. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So revival. Oh, may this place remain a place. If you know people who are weary and out, you can just drag them. Somebody tells you, me now, I've done everything you can think about. And you are trying to talk to the person and you just tell the person, I know a place where the river flows from Zion. And I will just come and keep you in that atmosphere. The person may even come late, just like many people outside here. And while they listen, something is happening. It's more than the words we speak. There is a spirit communication. If it were words, believe me, you will be tired by now. There is a difference between newness and freshness. Will you open up the gates? Open up the door. Will you open up the gates? Open up the doors. Mandala Kabaradosh. Will you open up the gates? Open up the doors. Sing it from your heart to your maker. Will you open up the gates? The gates. Open up the door. In your name, we will rise. I don't 
you reign on high. Adonai, Adonai, yeah. Adonai, yeah. you reign on high. Sing in your name, in your name. Malaka parakos katabrande gadebash. We will rise. Maria Mariana. Sing Adona. 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 Just the voices. Adonai. Adonai. Our territory will not fail. We will not misrepresent the kingdom. You reign on Sing Adonai. Adonai. Please sit down if you can. Be sensitive to what God is doing tonight. Adonai, you reign on now. Adonai. Adonai. The last thing to expect every time you come for koinonia is a demonstration of the power of God. It's a doom to any territory where there are no instruments that can bring the supernatural to a people. It's a doom to any territory when the sick and the helpless cannot have an alternative. There must be a spiritual center that represents the might of God in a city. There must be a place where men can know that these demons disturbing my life can go. We are unapologetic about stamping the gates of hell within our territory. In the time of John G. Lake, Spokane was said to be the cleanest city. Hallelujah. E.W. Kenyon so many people have received this message without carrying his mantle a truck hit somebody in his church pieces the leg he stood in front of it and the leg started shaking and every bone joined back it was not a strange miracle that was the miracle of ushers we have lost so much we are not aware we don't know our spiritual heritage pastors don't research they just get up and preach nonsense nonsense and everybody claims he's doing something i don't say this in a cynical way my heart is pain because there are souls that are lean and hungry nothing current in what the spirit is doing we celebrate these things and we justify growth because we can afford to buy suits and we have a nice car to prove that it is working is that how much we love the body we have lost touch with our spiritual heritage. We don't know what happened before we came. And we have the audacity to believe that we are custodians of the mysteries of God. A custodian of a mystery is also a historian. One who meticulously studies the dealings of God. How did God move in the 50s? How did God move in the 60s? How did God move in the 80s? When revivals died, what happened? Have you not read of prophets in the Bible who spent their life searching prophecy? They were just searching the connecting prophecy. And when it was time for them to die, they left the curriculum for whoever would take up. Ministry is full time. Full time. Your entire life is spent guiding the people of God. Ministry is not a vocation. 
where you try to get a job and it doesn't work and you say well so that i don't feel like i've wasted my life i just step into the vineyard that's the motivation a lot of people have so they are there and they are thinking that when i start buying a nice shoe and i can afford suit or something or i have a crowd brothers and sisters it's more than that it's more than that it's more than that this place is a place of healing a place of miracles my goodness the number of text messages i get from people and families that are oppressed is scary and overwhelming overwhelming when banks close for public holiday it affects a territory if they close by thursday people cannot wait for monday monday morning everybody is standing and arguing with their atm no matter how much they have in their account because they they miss the bank for three days i'm teaching tonight on the spirit of revival the spirit of true revival not on you reign on revelation chapter 3 in your name we will rise i don't know you reign on high. casting crowns lifting hands bowing hearts is what i've come to do Casting crowns, lifting hands, bowing heart is what we've come to do. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus. Jesus. See, let me tell you something. By the time Koinonia moves to our next level of life, where we have an auditorium, it, services will run every day. Something must be happening spiritually. I, I don't believe in all this coldness then one day people just come around and scramble two hours snoring their destiny and come out and believe they will take no 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 go and ask a habalist if he goes on vacation ask him if he goes on holiday we must make the body of christ an institution these are the principles of strategic kingdom advancement when you are tired that's when somebody is when you are you are charged that's when somebody else is tired there will always be people oh i look forward to those times center for kingdom activities there's a message playing there's worship playing there is a place to flog it out activities of angels that's what will happen listen listen we are not a social welfare group we are not we are not contributing to helping government no we are not helping any government we are enforcing something that this thing they are doing is nonsense we are not a part of it we are loyal citizens but this is not our ideology so i'm not i'm not in partnership with any government doing anything we are not social welfare we are bringing the kingdom and its reality into a tent there are there are few territories where you go that you i mean there should be these kinds of places these kinds of places all around that you can step in somewhere right and just pray and see somebody praying with you a christian library books about generals where you go and sit down and study there are dvds playing archives not conferences places to build not branches centers that educate people on what god is doing when we lose touch with history we will die a natural death i'm telling you this i 
Hallelujah. Yeah. Your rent has expired. Nobody is helping you. You just know that there is a place where you find comfort. You go and see people like you crying to God. You are crying 10,000. Somebody is saying 1 million. Say, oh Lord, I find comfort in you. A city of refuge. Do you know why many believers compromise? There is no kingdom community. That community life of the kingdom is not there. There is no place they can retreat to. When they have been wounded and beaten by darkness. When their faith is stretched, there is hardly a place where they can go and find refuge. And you try to create those places and see the gate of hell rise. They will allow you to do any conference you want. But make up your mind to create a physical portal for people. All hell will fight it. And those people will usually be Christians. We owe our generation a debt to preserve the heritage of spiritual things. There has to be somebody. In ancient times, they usually are these elders. And when Israel starts messing up, Moses and all the people will say, Okay, let me remind you. Because then some of you were not born. How by a mighty outstretched arm he brought us out of Egypt. Right? He did this and that and the people are listening. And at the end of it, the people say, Ah, we repent. We will serve the Lord. Satan's plot is to destroy people like us. So that there, there, there is no more... There, there will no longer be voices that can connect people and everybody will start doing anything he wants to do called church. We, we must re-examine this thing we have been doing called church because it's not producing the required result. I'm telling you. Oh, may it please the Lord to feature us again and again in the moves that he's doing and give us an opportunity to create space for him on the earth. Because he's pressing to find expression. When, when Anna was mocked by Penina, where did she run to? Was it closed? She knew where to run to. Right now, let me tell you where we run to. Every other place is closed. Only the Habal home. The man says, I'm, I'm here any day, any time. Just come with your goat. And you see a Christian dragging a he goat to a, a Habal home. And we have the mouth to criticize them. We have the mouth to call everybody fake. There are pastors who call everybody aside from them fake. Right? Ask them what contribution they are bringing in building the body. Let me tell you, if I'm sick, if I were not born again and I'm sick and dying, I will go to any herbalist. I don't care anybody that is talking to me. Are you hear what I'm saying? I will not do it in the secret. I will do it openly. How many people have died in the church who should not die? Because they will not come and be healed and be delivered because of loyalty to an ideology that somebody told them. There are people who are sick today. They are dying. Some of them will come and ring my phone and disturb me to come and meet me in the night. They will criticize me in the day and call in the night. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your own. Oh, sing, thou fountains of the deep, and weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your own. Break forth, thou spirit of the deep, and weep, Kadosh. You are mighty on your You are mighty on your Mighty on your Mighty on your Mighty on your You are mighty in this place Mighty on your Mighty on your throne Mighty on your Break forth, thou fountains of the deep, and weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your Break forth, thou spirit of the deep, 
and we pass. You are mighty on your own. God must find a place in this city and in this region that can host the full dimension of what he seeks to do. We must pay the price of alignment in the spirit for God to find the people. Listen, don't let anybody make you look like a fool for being serious with God. What are you doing? I'm a pastor. No, no, no. What are you doing for a living? Look at that stupid statement. As though being a man of God is a call to they just look at you as if you, you have your whole life as wasted. Shame on our degree of backsliding. Believe me, I, I've come with a mantle of revival tonight. My heart pains me when I see this thing. As I travel around regions, I know that men of God are doing their best. But I'm telling you, there's got to be true apostolic voices. It's not a title. It's not a name. It's an election of grace. When will the sick know that they can find a place of refuge? There are people who have come right now. Do you think it's my joy when I see people queuing up, standing? Some wanting to be healed, wanting to be blessed. I can hardly attend to one-tenth of people. It is never my intention to be a superstar. The problem is there is a price. It's not a gift. We have been deceived that it's a gift. Let me tell you. I may not boast of knowing so much principles about finances. I may not boast of knowing so much intellectually. But brothers and sisters, when it comes to the presence of God and the mysteries of the kingdom, it's an office. It's not a, it's not a title. It's an office. Paul says, how that by revelation it was revealed to me. This mystery. This mystery. It will usually take us a long time to realize the kinds of vessels and the graces that God puts before us. Spirit of revival. There's too much backsliding in the body of Christ. We don't even know where the reference is again. No reference. Anybody comes up with his idea of what he calls spiritual growth. No reference. You pray a little. People are looking. They are feeling offended for your prayer life. Because they are hoping you backslide. So that it will, it will, it will make them comfortable. Your, your fire is frustrating them because they don't want to grow. And seeing you increase is frustrating them recycling of revelations in the body of Christ because men cannot stay in the secret to pray the price and bring something fresh things are happening over territories we pastors are moving around with deaf ears no seeing eyes no hearing ear please we are going to pray just for one minute before I continue are we together you are going to say Lord revive my life Revive my life. Please pray. Inside and outside, pray. Revive my life. This can't be it. God is so much bigger than this. This can't be it. My God is so much bigger than this. Yeah, this can't be it. God is so much bigger than this. This can't be it. Oh, don't deceive yourself. You know what the standard is in the spirit. You are bigger than this. Yeah, this can't be it. My God is so much. Big 
deeper than this It's calling us deeper Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. A revival is a season of reawakening. A season of reawakening from a state of dormancy. A reawakening. A season of reawakening from a state of dormancy in the life of a people and a territory. A season of reawakening from a state of dormancy, spiritual inertia, inactivity in the life of a people and a territory usually brought about by an outpouring of the spirit a season of reawakening in the life of individuals and corporately across a territory usually brought about by an outpouring of the spirit a true revival it's a situation where there is an outpouring of the spirit. First in the life of individuals and then corporately across a territory. And it brings a reawakening, an awareness. I'm going to be very fast because I want us to pray. How do I know that a territory, please help me. How do I know that a territory is under the influence of a revival? Thank you. There are certain parameters. Number one, the first sign that a territory is under a revival is restoration of love and passion for God. Corporately, not just individually. There is a restoration of God consciousness in that territory. When there is a territory where there are people who drink anyhow, smoke anyhow, live anyhow do anything they want to do when they want to do it it may not be their fault but the spiritual envoys in that territory are to be blamed increase god consciousness there have been times through history when the anointing of the spirit will fall on individuals and a territory even those who are not born again will be forced to have that consciousness of god When they look at you today and they say, where is your phone? Imagine someone who you ask him, um, what's your number? And he said, number. That's strange, right? You look at the person, have you been existing in our, this our generation? Imagine a pastor comes to preach and he carries a big um, flat screen size computer and then comes to drop it. You know something is wrong right because there's a better technology than that that's what happens in a revival people are forced to talk about the move of god the newspapers are forced to carry something do you know that in the days of the generals right the newspapers hardly discussed politics it was in a critical way but they were always talking now we are so idle the newspapers know if they write about us they will not sell so they rather talk about somebody who imported chicken from somewhere and they caught him because people will buy it the moment they say a man of god moves in their noise because they are all these stupid people they have come again look at how much of a nuisance we have become to society 
they are irritated when they see our faces upon papers in the times of evan roberts people will lay hands on the magazine just lay hands on the newspaper and the spirit of revival will take people will start falling under the anointing repenting by themselves having visions of jesus restoration of love and passion for god don't let my love grow cold i'm crying out light the fire again i need your discipline i'm crying out light the fire again listen let me tell you how the spirit of the antichrist works in a territory the first thing that happens is satan usually uses the last revival to stop the next one are you seeing that now so the man of god who god did business with in the last revival usually what happens is that because of what is happening there is what we call premature satisfaction little result oh apostle joshua selman you are the talk of the town the, satan takes advantage of that because he knows we like it we like names we like titles we like accolades oh here comes the man of god the one who raises the dead and and, and heals the sick and we we pride ourselves to our detriment we love honor there is an obsession about it we can do anything for it including backsliding so what happens is that people keep watching the devil keeps watching this thing your prayerlessness starts increasing your wordlessness starts increasing but he will never strike he will allow you and then he will throw all kinds of persecutions get my teaching why revivals die you know all those kinds of things together when that person is watered down god no longer has a voice listen there is a difference between god speaking to you in your secret place and god speaking to a territory god has his mouthpieces everywhere And then compromises begin to come in. What you would have talked about, you no longer talk about. Let me tell you how Satan destroys great men. He makes us victims of our messages. If Satan knows that God has anointed me to liberate people in an area, he will do everything within his power to make me a victim of those areas the reason is because when that happens you no longer will have the confidence to preach with might are you seeing why you need discipline love for god love for god your passion your obsession about god when you love god there are indices there must be a restoration of that love some of you sitting down looking at me you know how you were with god tell yourself the truth ah don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. I need your discipline. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. You see, if you love God because of husband, the day the husband comes, there's no more pursuit to love God. You see why we teach? Look, you know, I teach you a balanced teaching here. When you tie your love for God to things, as a bride, you are in for a shock. I can love God because of anointing. I hope you know that. And that anointing can lead me to go and fast because I want power. The day the power comes and I can have one or two results, I now know that the anointing has come. Are we together now? So no matter what I... You don't know my secret place. Is it not when I come out here? It's only God that knows whether I'm serious over what I'm saying or not. You cannot ordinarily tell whether a man of God is serious with God or not. Because you see, God is so merciful. He will always confirm his word in the midst of the people. And it usually is a justification to men of God to mean they are intact. Be careful. That God is still using you and the power of God is still flowing does not mean that he's accrediting everything you are doing you must go back to the secret place for editing and fine-tuning 
love for God. I am shocked to see how fast people lose their love for God. Lord, if you do this for me, I will come and testify. And then the other part of the story, we don't say it out, but it's in our heart. If you don't do it, I will hate you. So, it doesn't seem to happen. Oh God, no husband again. Am I the worst sinner on earth? And, and you hear all those kinds of statements. How can you tie your love for God for these kinds of things? Success can distract men. Please hear this. There are many teachings on success that I will bring this year. But let me tell you, success can distract more than failure. In fact, failure gives you focus because your ego is already strong. But success can distract. Whenever you begin to see your candle rise, brothers and sisters, that's when to catch God. That's not when to leave him and say, everybody behold the celebrity. You will die like a chicken. When Satan wants to throw you, he allows you to rise high enough for everybody to see you. He throws you in a way that threatens everybody so they don't try to rise like you again. Because the memory of your fall stops them from pressing it. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why certain people will not be serious with God and the devil will not touch them until they rise high before everybody. And then something will happen and crash them down. Love for God. This night... We are addressing our love for God. Lovest thou me more than this. One of the first indices of a true revival. We can look at Zaria as a city and Samaru as a region and know whether the spirit of revival is in this city. We can look at ABU as a campus and know whether our love for God has diminished. When somebody, let me not go ahead of myself. Number two, marks characteristics of a true revival. Number two, the outpouring of the true spirit of holiness. Over a territory, an outpouring. Brothers and sisters, may God never make our territories without men who can speak the truth. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The devil is out to frustrate men of God and water down people who can speak the truth. Please, let me tell you something. Brothers and sisters, if you are a Christian, many things must change in your life. Your lifestyle must change. Your conversation must change. Not by the energy of the flesh. There is an alignment. Your job is to do that alignment. If you do it well, the transformation must happen. There's too much nonsense and carelessness in the body of Christ. To a point that somebody will have to say, I'm a Christian. For it, Oh, you're a Christian, so you're a brother in the faith. That's a serious issue. Are we here? You, you see a Christian sit somewhere and he's talking. My goodness, you are embarrassed. Until you start talking about koinonia, for instance, and say, ah, koinonia, you know, apostle, ah, you know, you see me. You say, you mean you are there? In Antioch, it was unbelievers. Who called people who were a reproduction of Christ? They call them Christians. Who is calling you a Christian? Can those who hate you say, I hate this person? No, but I know he's a Christian. You can't be drinking and smoking and say, It's just my body that is drinking, my spirit is okay. You are not all right. Please, let's, let's end this. You are not all right. Let me tell you the truth. No, you are not all right. You are watching porn. See, you see, let me tell you something. I'm not condemning you. Don't get me wrong. The difference between a Christian and an unbeliever is the presence of the convicting power of the Spirit. When, when you are sinning unconvicted, you are not in Christ. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yeah. If by the work of the flesh, somebody falls into a habit, you went to your friends, they reminded you of Gulda that you used to take. You don't know what happened. You gave into the flesh. That conviction is a sign that you are in Christ, that you can return. And the Bible says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. It says, and the truth is not in us. It said, but if we confess our sins, not assume they are not there. If we confess our sins, not assume they are not there. It says, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Have you turned that out of your Bible? Because it's supposed to be there. The true spirit of holiness. 
please i speak especially to the young people all of us who are young people in this region let's not make it look like being a young person is a stupid thing are we together some people were discussing me somewhere and uh, i got to hear of course and one of the ladies said, ah, this person you mean there are all these beautiful girls in koinonia how is he doing let me tell you how i'm doing i'm very fine very fine very fine healthy in the spirit very fine i intend to continue with god for a long time i decided that from the start of the journey we are afraid of the responsibility that firm decision brings because we know it will have to force us we still want to enjoy some things you see that because if you make a firm decision you too you know you know a firm decision means deleting that person's phone number but you don't want to so you are not serious that's the meaning it's as simple as that because you live jesus i live i have no fear of what tomorrow brings because you live jesus i live today i live to pray a true spirit of revival that you can see somebody kept his money and leave it there when the old man wants to touch it he reminds you that it has been nailed to the cross and you mind your business and leave that money there even though you needed money to eat the spirit of holiness let me tell you if we allow the spirit of holiness to leave our territory we will never experience the fullness of god we will not see miracles and signs and wonders please let's not mock god i know what i'm saying is hard but you too you know i'm not lying you know i'm not lying don't let the spirit of holiness just run out of your life and the key to unholiness is carelessness carelessness bros you did there's one party we're having yeah but i don't drink against it just come jerry carelessness lot settled near sodom lot settled near sodom let lot settled near sodom you take advantage of the grace of god and produce a life that is worthy please don't feel condemned i speak to all of us here those who are here and those who are following us the goal is not to condemn you but the goal is to create conviction by the power of the holy spirit holiness and power go hand in hand don't ever deceive yourself that you can compromise on holiness and experience the power of god you can kneel down with offering and lift it to a man of god there has to be true holiness there has to be true holiness i'd like you to lay hands on your head in one minute and pray and say lord restore to my life the spirit of holiness go ahead and pray please pray especially if you know you are affected by what i'm saying please pray this is a threshing floor it's a family please lay your hands and say lord i've been pretending as if this is not an issue but tonight you have brought your word out of love not to condemn me but to remind me that you are still waiting i receive a baptism of the spirit of holiness those outside please make sure you are laying your hand oh i separate myself by grace from the works of the flesh the impulses of the flesh the appetites of the flesh the appetite the lust and the carnality that destroy great men. Lord, I'm going far. The spirit of holiness must come upon my life. It must come upon my life. I receive a restoration. Lord, I used to have it, but something happened. I gave in to women. I gave in to men. I gave in to drinking. I gave in to wrong relationships. I was lonely and I allowed i i frustrated the manifestation but tonight oh god in this place i receive grace 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 it's not by the strength of the flesh 
you can't resist evil by the strength of the flesh remember the cross the place where grace comes from your old man has been nailed therefore mortify your body take advantage of that grace let it become an instrument of righteousness please pray it's a year of multiplied grace and influence god is not a native doctor godliness true holiness that's why many of our fathers have lost touch with spiritual reality help us oh god that in lifestyle in character in conversation that everything about your life there is a presence of holiness you will carry on your job in school in your atmosphere not by condemning others not by reading people off that's the flesh you won't glorify god that way but that you carry a compelling presence hallelujah before we continue pray again say lord i overcome carelessness in my life some of us are already at the verge god is bringing this as a prophetic message because some of us are already dwindling visiting the guy carelessly doing all kinds of things carelessly you are a christian god is bringing this message to salvage you get back to order get back to order get back to order get back to order the true spirit of holiness no you can't start accepting bribe not at this level of your life you used to hate it before don't all of a sudden love bribe you are a christian and a christian indeed the spirit of god in you and the righteousness of god compels you to hate immorality not out of fear but because of your love for god and your desire to be used by him make sure it doesn't leave that's a fire you must not allow to die aside from immorality and the rest what of vain glory what of self-seeking what of vanity ambitions that are not consistent with christ please pray this is a threshing floor tonight those of us outside make sure you are praying if nobody has told you there is a problem with your life i'm telling you there is if you are giving room to the flesh i don't care what excuse you bring god does not condemn but he does not condone evil many of us have been praying lord i want you to use me i want to see your power i'm showing you the secret it overrides fasting and prayer hallelujah let's hurry up number three the third sign to know that there is a true revival in a place the third sign is massive salvation of souls genuine salvation genuine salvation genuine salvation it's not enough for people to come and be saved they must be saved well well to stay well and grow massive salvation that is engineered by those who are custodians of that revival listen if there is no true passion for souls in your heart something is wrong let me prove to you that it's unnatural how many of you have seen a scene where there is an accident nobody asks who is a christian there or who is a muslim everybody rushes because they want to save them from dying every time you see sinners i want you to imagine an accident scene imagine a fatal accident what would you do there are some of us we have roommates we have people in our workplaces is until maybe three months to leave Zaria that they stumble across Koinonia and they come and find you there and you see them crying and say this is what you have been enjoying 
say i'm too fine how can i tell this guy to come how can i lead him to christ massive salvation by the way the lord while i was preparing this the lord gave me an instruction i'll say during the announcement but then let me say it again by god's grace next friday's miracle service you're coming with two sets of requests the first is the names of your family members and loved ones those who you have tried to get them born again come and watch god will do for them this year you will watch what god will do he will surprise you are, are we are, please you are permitted to write a full scrap sheet of names if you have it write it down right no matter i don't care who they are don't you let the devil tell you god cannot save any man if he saved you he can save any man even pharaoh although he didn't repent but he acknowledged that there was god ne ne nebuchadnezzar acknowledged god turned him into an animal leave the how to god god knows where to touch them and force them to come to christ when saul landed on the floor he knew that this was god See, God knows where to touch the arrogance of any man. Are we together? So you're going to bring one prayer request, your normal prayer request and that of your loved ones, but please, write it down. Not names of enemies, and that's not what I'm asking you. Names of sinners, sinners, people who you know you are agreeing with God. Let me tell you one key to seeing the hand of God on your life. Be passionate about where his heart is. Are we together? if i'm a millionaire and you want to get my attention won't you look for what interests me and also be passionate because that will be the meeting point are we together we want to call god's attention but we are not facing where his heart is facing it's not enough to pray and fast you must be serious about sinners there are some of us when we make altar calls here you now look at time and say let's hurry up to you it's not a big deal you've forgotten that he saved you You've forgotten that that person he's saving now may be the first in a family of 10 to be born again. I remember one of our ladies who years ago, they were all unbelievers, you know, non-Christians now, I mean. And God, I mean, saved her. She became saved, I think, while on campus. And we kept praying like this in the initial days when we used to start our meetings. God touched her brother. I think God touched her mother. Three of them were all saved, remaining the father. The father was a hardened. He wasn't somebody who was near the kingdom. We told her, keep praying. Just don't say God will not touch them. Keep praying. One day, she received a call. He was saved in living faith. When he was saved, I was told reliably that they took money at the back of the boot of a car. He's, I don't know, it's like his family members. They drove down and said, which depression are you in that would have made you to become a Christian? Ah, you will see salvations that will scare you. The day you go and look at somebody in your family, you will think it's a mistake. You just hear, you say, "What are you doing?" Say, "I'm praying in tongues." Say, "Are you joking?" Say, I, I, "I'm a sanctuary keeper. I'm, I'm, I've, I've left the world since." I used to have a bad colleague years ago. One time, I heard that he was a pastor in Salem Ministry. I said, "It's a lie." The one day he called me. And we're talking we just spoke and about a shot i said tell me it's a joke tell me it's a joke these guys were the fence jumpers these guys were the ones they carry in the gutter in the morning and now he has been changed please don't conclude on any man don't conclude on any man that roommate you are seeing you know every friday she's not around till monday morning wait and see what god does with her the reason why we don't evangelize is because we don't believe God can touch people. There's no body on earth today that God cannot save. There is hope for the living. There is hope for the living. Is God helping us? Please, we are going to see massive salvation. Make sure you don't allow people without. You can give them koinonia messages. You can pray for them. If you don't have the courage, drag them and bring them to koinonia. Just like many people, as I'm talking now, there are many people who will respond to the altar call right now. They came because they were invited. When you love souls, you can pay for them to come. If 50 naira is too much for you to pay transport for someone to come and get born again, don't say you love God. Don't say you love God. When a guy loves a lady, 
he can have 5,000 in his account. He will withdraw it. Leave the minimum balance and tell her eat. She said, I don't want to stress your body. I said, no, 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 those eat. It's me that is paying for this thing. But when it comes to souls, we are afraid. Well, someone is telling you, Kai, I, I would love God, but he's giving flimsy excuses. Why don't you tell the person, two of us, let's climb bike and come. Are you that passionate and unembarrassed? Do that and see the way God wipes your tears. See, these are kingdom keys. There are no shortcuts to this thing. Souls. When I pray many times, I say, oh God, use Koinonia as a platform to save sinners. You see my heart when we make altar calls and people are coming. I tell you, give them chance to come. I remember somebody... Uh, I, I, I don't know exactly. I think he was he's, he's an imam or something. One of these, these uh, very strong guys. He was seated outside when I was teaching the reality of heaven and hell. This was somebody who is learned. You understand what I'm saying? And he sat down outside and was thinking. And while I was teaching, he saw a vision of Jesus outside. And he got born again. The day he came for counseling, I could not believe it. Ushers, I think one or two people. There's one of our brothers in Ushers too who was like that. Now, totally transformed, serving the Lord, working in the ocean department. Who told you God cannot save them? Your stubborn father, your stubborn mother, your missing brother, who comes back once in three months, I'm telling you, when the power of God lands on them. We don't know the power that raised Christ from the dead. That's why. Because all we are teaching about in church is money. We don't know the power. If a power can raise a dead body, is it to transform one who is alive that it will not change Number four. Let's run. The fourth mark or characteristic of a true revival is passion for the house of God. Now, please hear me. I say this sincerely from the depth of my heart. And I, I mean no condemnation with this. But when as men of God we celebrate small ministries and small churches to mean no, I'm like that. Me, God gave me this. I don't believe in that concept. I know that crowd is not the ultimate determinant as to whether God is there. But brothers and sisters, people must be saved. And they must have passion for the house of God. Because that's when they are taught the precepts of the kingdom. The church is God's portal to reveal the mysteries of the kingdom. It's not enough for people to be born again. That's why we, co we collect their details. We send them text messages and follow them up. What's wrong with getting people born again and get their numbers? Once in a while, you send them a scripture. Maybe the person is about to go back to alcohol and ah, the text comes and you say, maybe it's a scripture. Love not the world. Looks at your phone. Looks at that bottle. And he knows. And the spirit of God, you have given him access to kick in. And he drops it never to pick it again. There's no support structure in the body of Christ to help sinners stand. Once they are born again, we say, okay, now just find your way back to your seat and the Lord help you. That's why when people get born again, we recommend to them. Because the ministry is still growing, we don't have all the avenues to do all the things we want to do. Right? We recommend them to go to the prayer department at least for one month even if they don't intend to be members just to join that's the only other large platform we have to minister to the people that's why pray for us pray for this ministry that god will take us to the next level fast and you will see the things that are in store for the body of christ passion for the house of god when coming to the house of god hear me let me use koinonia this is our platform when coming to koinonia suddenly becomes an endurance Please, I want you to know that something is already wrong with your spiritual life. Are we together now? Yeah. You just sit down and say, Kai, this thing self to six. I will even sit down outside. It's like it's cold, Abby. Those things are indices. It's a reaction.
to something already happening in your spirit i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord the, the scripture, the anchor scripture that the Lord gave us. Remember the scripture. It says, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted and all nations shall flow. They will say to themselves, come, let us go to the house of the Lord, to the mount of God. For there he will teach us his ways. He said, for out of Zion shall proceed the Lord. Passion. Passion. There are people, you see them, January, Koinonia, and then later on, Maybe when resort is out or something, it just coincides with a miracle service. They now drag themselves and come and sit outside. And of all the prophecies that are coming, they are just waiting for when they talk about academics. The moment they say, for your academics, they, now, they are now invited. Immediately they finish, they run. That game you are playing with God, you will not win. Praise the Lord. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Any ministry that is truly committed in soul winning will not be small. What we are doing in the church is sheep stealing. What did I call it? Sheep stealing. When you steal a sheep, a sheep is not a fool. It grew somewhere. Eventually, ah, you see, I am the good shepherd. My sheep here know my voice. And we, we steal sheep. We are, we are trying to steal choices, quality sheep. So if Sam, please stand up, Sam. If Sam is a millionaire, I want that kind of sheep around because I know the relevance of the sheep to that pasture or that place, that attitude. Every time we see unbelievers, you see somebody with his draggy jeans, you know this guy, you even need to support him back. We don't like those kind of souls. The person calls you daddy, say, who is your, I'm not your father, I don't know you. I just got you born again, please look for somebody else. These are the kinds, ah, this is my son, you are, I'm well pleased. That carnal attitude, are you getting what I'm saying? So, when, if that's why I say it to the glory of God, and you know here, I know no man after the flesh. I will not go to anybody's house and say, um, you are a senator, uh, your daughter is a member in our ministry, we, we, have, we, we want to buy boss. God will use people. There is nobody that I will reject on grounds of anything. Whether your father is a carpenter or a pilot, it doesn't matter. Hallelujah. We don't love the sheep and they know they know when, they know the type of sheep we love. When you see a beautiful lady, say you are you are my daughter. Daughter, how are you? And you keep stressing that lady even when she leaves your ministry. She's wondering, what do you like? Me or the beauty? See, members are not idiots. They know pastors who are serious. They know. They know pastors who are playing games. You just gather phone numbers of very pretty ladies. These are this is what we do that destroy us. Are we together now? Or we gather the number of people who are rich and all of that. And oh no, there is a place for honor. Don't get me wrong. What I'm saying, this thing we are doing is too much. It's sheep stealing. How many of us are willing to labor on sinners until they become true saints? The Bible says the kingdom of God is like a, a, remember the story of a shepherd, right? 99 sheep. One got missing. What did he do to the 99? They were all right. So he left them and went, still not minding if he loses the 99, went to look for that one. Is that our attitude? When somebody comes to stand, you are looking whether he's holding an envelope. If it's not, you look at his shoe, look at his watch and say, let's pray. Father, help this person. And you are praying, don't waste my time here. But when somebody comes, package, you're like, what are they, what, let me, let me know the needs. If you're a pastor here, please do this thing truly. God is going to judge us, not in a condemning way. We are going to be accountable for this. Act as if there is an authority above you. Members know. Let me tell you, there is no member who will see a man of God talking like I'm talking, who will not love him and be open to him. Do you know why many of our members in different churches, I'm speaking apostolically, there are many people listening. Do you know why many members 
they know their pastors don't like them they know it they can't truly call this person my pastor my father somebody i can come and talk to because they know that the pastors want money they want what will make them proud by god's grace we don't destroy our wounded soldiers here no matter what you have done we enter the hole with you and come out together a good shepherd doesn't stand on his sheep and leaves a trophy he lays down his life for his sheep passion for the house of god number five quickly passion for the word indices that measure a revival in a place passion for the word passion for prayer passion for a life of worship you can know whether a territory is under the influence of the spirit of revival by how much people hunger for the word jordan bookstore is there he will tell you i know that people love the word in this place i'm even careful to announce certain books because you announce it by tomorrow there are people who are already there getting books studying buying concordance truly let me tell you i'm shocked at people's low level of passion for the word of god when i started out with god sometimes you will come and see different kinds of bibles our money was spent buying bible not just to look for rema we didn't have the privilege to learn greek and hebrew so you listen we buy bible on tape bombard it put it in your ears i had one rechargeable there all kinds of songs all kinds of songs in the night you play it but right now what do we do with our money we don't do anything for the kingdom you buy one small bible that looks like a phone you just carry you cannot even see what is there and you don't care because you don't read it you don't read it obviously you don't read it please let's take this thing of god seriously when do you close yourself and study not just devotional where you read fast as you are praying you're on your way going oh i see this uh, god and then scripture for reading luke chapter this rejoice in the lord always again i say rejoice amen you just drop it and run ask the person what he's running towards he will tell you he's looking for money or a meaningful life and we have left the word of life i found your word and i did eat them and they were a joy and a rejoicing to my soul passion for the world passion for worship many of us don't worship we pray and we study the word there is a place for worship in your spiritual growth if you don't have worship tapes now technology has made it easy put these things i have a selection in my phone i call them deep worship there's one called encounter that one when when i'm high in the spirit i just switch not all songs minister to me at the same level i have studied what the anointing does and the songs that help them has it happened to you like that yeah you put the songs don't just say christian songs and then uh, uh, motivational songs no 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 separate this thing and take god seriously you have a selection the moment you just hear a christian one there is another one diluting your spirit and then midway after you enjoy it small just to satisfy the guilt you now quickly run to don Muen. don't please saints of god i admonish you in the name of jesus christ guard your heart with all diligence your destiny depends on it you will never find one on christian song in my phone i'm not one of those people who say look we need to work with technology i'm not a fool technology has failed us many things governments have failed us it's obvious they are ignorant we used to say it before but there was no room to expose it right now it's clear that the government of nations are clueless come to the kingdom and mend the ways of god the years to come will show the excellency of the wisdom of the spirit we are like the virgins that are taking extra oil now a time will come when those who had that oil they will not have anything again satan does not give anything free have you not learned a day will come the day he meets all the people celebrating him they will pay with their life satan never gives you a thing free he will give you you will think he's dash but his business he will come in the future for everything anybody that serves the devil knows that it's a fraternity unto death the end is death create an atmosphere of worship create an atmosphere of the world 
get Bible. I have, I have a, a very beautiful software that I got. Just the words of Jesus. They just pick them through the Gospels. Just everywhere Jesus spoke. Just the words of Jesus. Always oh, beautiful. With worship playing in the background like this. I tell you, you will wash your spirit. You know how you When you listen, you will know you are getting clean through the word. The word cleanses. Cleanses your mind. Sometimes I sleep and let it keep playing. And I have visions and encounters. You wake up shaking under the presence of God. You create an atmosphere that cannot be denied. This is how it happens. What if I have roommates that are not serious? That's why you have a phone. You cry to God for a good phone. He gave it to you. Use it well. Use it well. Not just for sending text messages. Use it well. How much does it take to download? I mean, there are Android devices with one, two thousand naira. Don't say I cannot afford it. Your hair, your shoulder, your knees, your toes. Look at all you have used your money that God gave you for building your spirit to just build your body alone. Remember, your spirit is better than your body. Invest in it first. Number. Let's hurry up. We're almost done. When there is a true revival in a place, there is an outburst of financial miracles and sociological advancement. Listen, revival affects the quality of the living of the people with India. Don't think when you subscribe to the things of God and a revival comes, um, it means that other areas of your life will suffer. No, when there is a real revival, the quality of the life of God's people is improved. Almost every major technological advancement is connected to a revival. It's just that the historians remove the God factor out and make it look like somebody just discovered something. A lot of the people who made strange discoveries, they did them coinciding with periods of revival. And most of those people were either Christians or came from Christian families. When the spirit of revival is upon you, you will be rich. You will be blessed because the presence of God will compel favor upon your life. When a ministry is under that kind of open heavens, they will enjoy supplies. People will do well. People will get jobs. There will be marriages. There will be blessings. There will be children. There will be all kinds of breakthroughs. Don't make it look as if when you seek God, you will be in trouble. No. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Matthew 6, 33 tells us. He said, and his righteousness, if you do that properly, he says, all other things shall be added to you as well. Amen. Seven. When there is the true spirit of revival in a place, there is an outburst of miracles, signs, and wonders. Oh, this is very important. There's gonna be a great awakening. There's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's going to be a great awakening. And everyone who calls on Jesus, they will be saved. Miracles. I believe in miracles. Believe me. I believe in signs and wonders. I believe in miracles. I believe the sick can be healed. I believe God can step into people's lives and change their stories. We've seen all kinds of testimonies in this place. That's what is going to happen to many of you this night. Koinonia remains a place of healing, a place of miracles. Because of people's inability to contend for the true healing power. They say, look, um, um, healing. When they say healing, they are quick. They say, no, 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 emotional healing. Please, physical healing. People are sick. Their bodies are sick. Are we together now? Yes, there's a place for emotional healing. But we usually say those things because there's no physical index to prove whether they are healed or not. If somebody is blind and is healed, he is healed. Is that not true? We must contend for grace even in this dimension. Say amen. And may it happen through your hands. There is a joy when God uses you. There is a joy when God does things around you. But when it happens through your hands, it's a blessing. I trust that God will use us to begin to lay hands on the sick and speak to people. That they note you and say, Ah, I, I came to Amaka and she prayed with me and doors just opened. Great testimony. 
Ella agreed with me. She prophesied something over my life. Oh, I met Aaron crying on something and he spoke over my life. Some of us are so backward in the area of the miraculous. Even if somebody said you prayed with me and something happened, say no, it's because you came for koinonia. You must believe God in your life. Hallelujah. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Any pastor in this day and age who is not serious about the miraculous should be prepared for empty pews. I guarantee you. Any pastor who is not ready for the demonstration of the miraculous people are not looking if they are looking for where to watch film the silver bed there are many there's cinema and all kinds of places people don't come to church to watch movies they come to church because they have real problems is that not true they need the power of god head on in their lives lastly the final index that shows that their atmosphere is under the influence of revival is impartation of gifts, graces, and mantles. Impartations. See, revivals are times where God recruits people into his army. Most people stepped into the call of God upon their life at revivals. When people are just praying non-stop for a while, the Holy Ghost separate me Paul and Barnabas. There has to be release of mantles, graces, impartations. It happens during revivals. There will be almost no impartations when revival is not in a place. Remember a man in the Bible called Agabus. He had daughters and all of them were prophets. There are few people who have carried those kinds of mantles that can come from father to children. God knows my children. God knows. Before they arrive, there will be a special recording waiting for them. As soon as they arrive, straight on. Before the nonsense that society brings. This and that. You are stupid. You are foolish. No. They will receive something. They will start having visions and encounters of Jesus. That's why I respect and I want us to appreciate them. I respect every parent in this place who come with their babies and their children. Let them sleep and sleep in the presence of God. It was in the presence of God Samuel was sleeping when he had the voice of God. Even if you must sleep, do it in the presence of God. Because although your body is sleeping, your spirit is receiving. Impartations of mantles and graces. That's what is happening to some of you. Some of you in the nearest future, God will send you to territories and you'll be the ones doing this thing I'm doing right now. When you stand one day you will just stop in the middle of the congregation and tears will come down and you will tell them once upon a time i sat down quietly i remember when i used to go for meetings and sit down and i hear the man of god say out of this place god will raise great men and people are shouting amen some are sleeping some are playing some are not serious and i just sit down there and i say really i could imagine the angels and all these people saying young man pay attention there are destinies tied to you Very quickly, what is the price? What is the requirement for revival? And we're going to pray. I'll just give you four of them quickly and then we're done. Sorry, I may not have time to read the scriptures. Is God blessing you tonight? The first price requirement for true revival, not assumed revival, true revival is consecration. The first prize you want to host the glory of God, the first requirement is consecration. Media, help us with one scripture that I found very interesting. Isaiah 52 verse 11. I'll, I'll just read the other ones while they pull up that one for us. 2 Timothy 2 verse 19 to 21 says, Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. It says, Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. He says, and let every man that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Iniquity is not just sin, fornication and the rest. No, it's a state of your heart that produces those workings of the flesh. Let's read this scripture together. One, to read. Depart ye, depart ye. Go ye out from thence. Touch no unclean thing. It says, go ye out from the midst of her. Be ye clean. 
that bear the vessels of the Lord. Those that host precious things from God. He says, depart. Depart ye. Consecration. Consecration. Very, very important. Set apart for his service. Set apart. The Bible says there is no man who warreth and tangles himself. We want to be civilians and soldiers at the same time. It doesn't happen. No. Consecration. Consecration is understood when you look at monks and sisters in a convent. You know that, that dedication. They have decided that they are not going to get married for the purpose of their service to the kingdom. You must dedicate your whole life some of us have given god half of our lives some of us gave god everywhere excluding your head and your thinking some of us gave god every no 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 you have to give him everything you're my treasure my priority who can compare to you for great is the measure of your royalty, O morning star, you truly are. Number two, the second prize is hunger and thirst. You want to see revival in your life, there must be a hunger for it. Isaiah 44 verse 3 and Psalm 63 verse 1 and 2. I'm giving this to us very quickly because of time. He will pour water upon him that is thirsty. Him that is what? There must be a thirst. I will pour water on him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. Do you have that hunger? I'm telling you, I have an insatiable hunger to see revival in my life. I want to see the revival power of God in my life. That everywhere I go to regions to minister, I leave a deposit of the spirit of revival in that place. Hunger and thirst. Psalm 63 verse 1 and 2. He says, Oh Lord, you are my God. Early will I seek you. He say, My soul pants after you. Right? In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. To see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. Do you have that hunger and thirst to see revival in your life? It was men like John Knox that prayed and said, Lord, give me Scotland or I die. We quote it and have no passion at all. Number three. The price for revival. Prolonged seasons of intense prayer with fasting. Prolonged seasons. You don't pray for one week and see revival. There are women who prayed for their children for 20 years non-stop. Before the fire of God fell on them. Prolonged seasons. That's why it's important to be consistent in your prayer life. And please, I talk to everybody here, inside and outside. If your prayer life has nosedived, we welcome you to join the prayer department on Tuesdays. Even if it is for one week, there is fire burning in that place, I tell you. Join and refire yourself. Prolonged seasons of intense prayer with fastings. Listen. Fasting is a powerful spiritual principle. You don't do it out of religion or out of fear. However, it, it energizes your spirit and promotes you to have faith in God. Really, unbelief is what it challenges. So that the conviction about the reality of God is crystallized in your heart. Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4. It was while they were in the upper room praying that the Holy Ghost fell. Acts 13 verse 2 it was while they worshipped and prayed and ministered unto the Lord with fasting 
the Bible spoke, I mean, God spoke to them and said, separate unto me Paul and Barnabas. Number four, the price for the word of God. Intense study of the word. With a view to living by it. Not just for head knowledge. Not like the people, the Bible says, ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Intense study of the word of God. Finally, the last price for revival is the sacrifice of time. The sacrifice of time. You want to see God's might in your life, you must give him time. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you. You are not going to rush God and see His glory. The proof of passion is the investment of time. Anything you love, you have time for it. Please give God time. Remember I told us last week, you must give God time. Don't give God one hour. Don't give God two hours. There are times where you have to dedicate a whole day and just say, Lord, this is for you. A time of worship and prayer. Let his presence host you. That day, you are dedicating it just for watching movies that will build your life, Bible stories, watching messages, listening to teachings, worship, prayer. You mustn't even be fasting. You can just focus. This day is unto you. Imagine if someone walked up to you and said, I'm dedicating my tomorrow for you. No matter how antisocial you are, even if you say, no, thank you, you will be happy. That somebody can sacrifice his day. When you come to somebody and he tells you, look, I don't have time, I'm busy. Sometimes you feel bad. You feel that ah, this person doesn't value me so much. That's what happens when we come to God and just worship. him. God, are you aware that I have problems? Okay, I'm aware. Do something about them. I'm on my way. Lord, I give you time. My life is measured in time. And if I give God my life, he must be Lord of my time too. He's Lord of my time. At this level of your life, the time you are spending visiting people and, and gossiping, they are tired of you. Why don't you come to the one who is not tired of you? They don't just have the courage to tell you. They are really tired of you. You are going every time, eating, disturbing, bringing stories that are unnecessary. At a point, you now lie on it because you have to keep moving. I mean, why don't you come to somebody who he never says change to come. He says my presence will change you. Come. come. I give God time. Anyone who knows me knows that I give God time. Check the amount of time you give to God. Now, of course, if you are working, you don't have all the time. You can't get up doing your job and just shut down that day. No, no, no. no. There are times, there are weekends, there are holidays there are special times you can just say lord you know that it's my desire to spend this much time with you but now that i've had this opportunity i run to you i run to you we don't know what happens in the presence of god when we give him time when the glory of god comes into your life he brings beauty beauty and glory your life will remain a wonder to people if you can be planted by that riverside side hallelujah we are going to pray just three prayer points tonight hallelujah now listen as let me make an altar call before we start praying there are so many people outside and some sitting down here the moment I spoke about revival you know it you know it that you need an awakening in your life there are those who have given their hearts to the lord
but truly truly you know that your current state your current state you are not in fellowship with god number two there are people who have never given their lives to christ god brought you here jesus himself orchestrated your coming please don't be stubborn to his voice nobody will put a chain around you and draw you but you know the voice of your shepherd the spirit of every man knows hallelujah as we arise i want all those people to begin to make their way now i'm going to sing once and as i'm singing please make your way and come to jesus right now there are so many people outside begin to clap for them shepherd of my soul i give you full control wherever you may lead me i will follow i have made a choice to listen for your voice wherever you may lead me i will go keep coming shepherd of my soul i give you full control wherever you may lead me i will fall keep coming clear the way for them lord i have made a choice to listen for your voice wherever you may lead me i will go i will go i will go wherever you lead me yeah. i will go i will go i will go i will go wherever you lead I honestly believe with all my heart that there are still more people outside don't let the space yes scare you they were not just it's not just about crowd it's about the fact that you should not be sitting down when you are supposed to be coming out if the Holy Ghost is speaking to you and you know that you need Jesus please leave your seat and come out it's a call it's a very serious call a call that will bring revival in your life hallelujah those of us who are here some of us are giving our lives to christ for the first time some of us have given our lives to christ before but the, the encumbrances of life have pushed us out of alignment i want you to know that there is hope for you this is this is a family of faith hallelujah we are going to pray before I pray for you in one minute, can you talk to Jesus by yourself? Truly from your heart. Say, Lord, I've come to you. I'm not ashamed. I'm tired of moving in circles. I'm pretending like I'm finding fulfillment. There is a vacuum in my heart. Lord, I cry that you will lift me. Fill that vacuum. Help. Help. Cry to your maker. Fill that vacuum. Lord, I've filled it with relationships. I've filled it with friends. I've filled it with sin. I've filled it with the flesh. But this night, help them under the anointing, please. This night. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. Please talk to Jesus by yourself. We call you our Messiah, Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. Hallelujah. Please lift your right hand. I salute you for the courage. Listen, I want you to know that Jesus is in this place. And heaven is rejoicing over your courage it takes courage to stand before god it takes courage to stand before the people of god 
there are some of you because of your lifestyles people can look at you and say ah this person too don't mind anybody you are standing before your maker it's a decision that will transform your life forever hallelujah say after me very clearly say lord jesus please say it from your heart lord jesus i come to you with all my heart i believe in you i believe you died for me i believe you shed your blood for my sins i receive eternal life into my spirit i ask you to be my lord and my savior write my name in the lamb's book of life from today let my life change and let it change forever i'm a child of god the power of sin and the flesh is broken over my life forever in the name of jesus keep your hands lifted let me pray for you father i break the power of sin and death over your people in the name of jesus i set you free from everything that will not let you serve god in spirit and truth and i declare that from tonight you are caught away from your old self you are a brand new person washed by the blood of jesus let the devil not take any railing accusation like joshua the high priest satan the lord rebuke you we declare that these men and women they are the righteousness of god in the name of jesus we take off that filthy garment and we put the garment of the righteousness of god from today you stand blameless before the throne in the name of jesus christ i pray i supply grace upon you to live a victorious christian life grace upon you in the name of jesus christ amen and amen let's celebrate them now i'd like you to do something very quickly please and please we want to have your details we are going to reach you we are going to send you a text you'll get an sms from us and from then we'll keep you posted on the activities of the ministry i'd like you to just um i'm sure there's a gentleman there and there's another one here um, you can take this way or take this way meet them they'll have your details very quickly and you join us as we conclude the service god bless you god bless you let's honor them celebrate them